The world is full of mysteries. Oftentimes throughout history, we face stories and encounters so strange that the facts concerning their case, and the rumours that would arise from them, seem to blur into an almost unending story, leaving experts scrambling for any possible explanation. So today we'll be taking a look at 25 unsolved mysteries. Ancient Egypt is home to the pharaohs and the pyramids. It was the setting of many mathematical, medical and agricultural advances, and in the modern day is a historical place of enormous intrigue and fascination. One structure that sometimes gets overlooked due to being next to the Great Pyramids is that of the Great Sphinx. The Great Sphinx of Giza, commonly known as the Sphinx, is a grand limescale structure in the Golden Giza Desert of Egypt. The statue is of a reclining Sphinx, a mythical creature that combines the head of a human with the body of a lion. The Sphinx is seen as a dangerous, merciless creature in Greek mythology. In Egyptian mythology, however, the Sphinx is a slightly less cruel creature. Unlike the Greek Sphinx, the Egyptian one is firstly male, and secondly is described as more benevolent than the Greek Sphinx. However, they are both thought to be extremely strong, and guarded the entrance to temples in ancient times. Today, the Sphinx is a tourist attraction more than anything. Such an incredible architectural feat naturally draws a lot of attention, and historians and researchers have spent years delving into the history of the Sphinx. Naturally, this leaves various unanswered questions. The first modern archaeological dig of the Sphinx was undertaken in 1817, but it was some time before that that it had been visited and captured in painting. Around 1798, French painter Vivance Denon painted a picture of the Sphinx, but when it was finished, critics noticed something a little strange. Denon had painted a man being pulled out of the head of the Sphinx, Two figures were helping a third one out of the head of the statue, which had been painted side on. Now, you may wonder whether this was simply a matter of imagination. Perhaps Denon had wanted to add something a little different to the painting, but of course nobody knows for sure, as it was the 18th century and the beauty of both aviation and drone imagery had not quite yet been invented. However, in the 1920s, aerial photography had become possible, and lo and behold what appeared on the Sphinx's head, a hole big enough for a man to fit through. Naturally, this made Denon's painting all the more interesting. It appeared he'd actually seen people climbing out of the Sphinx, which begged the question who was in the Sphinx, and what were they doing? Not a lot is known about the history of the Sphinx, or at least there isn't a lot of definitive knowledge. But researchers have noticed that the head of the Sphinx is made from different materials to the rest of the statue. The head appears to be made out of a man-made substance rather than limestone, hence the darkness of the stone of the head compared to the body. Furthermore, the Sphinx's head has hardly eroded, and appears smoother than its body. This again points to the idea that the head was somehow interfered with, maybe long before any Western peoples ever knew of its existence but this still doesn't answer the question of why those men were in the head of the Sphinx. One thing that is known is that restoration work has been done on the Great Sphinx. Something to note though is that at the time and as mentioned by Tor Egypt, systematic research on the water table pollution and on the properties of the stone and mortar were undertaken. They note though that for some unknown reason these discoveries were not applied when the restoration work was being carried out. It's been theorised that the hole in the head of the Sphinx actually led to an underground chamber, which then joined up to more underground chambers beneath the Great Pyramids. This secret city, as it was dubbed by the mainstream media, was allegedly found in March of 1935. Newspapers even covered the topic, and it was speculated that this discovery would have gone down in history as being one of the greatest. However, not one Egyptologist or researcher commented on the findings. It was almost as if every researcher forgot about these initial discoveries. There was complete silence from those studying and working alongside these structures. Back in 1987, 
a Japanese research team from Tokyo's Wasada University, began an extensive underground survey of the region surrounding the Great Sphinx, utilizing groundbreaking technology at the time, known as the Electromagnetic Sounding Survey Radar. In an attempt to better image the sunken regions of the Sphinx statue, under the direction of lead researcher Sakju Yashimara, the team got some of the most accurate 3D rendering images of the statue ever taken, with a strange revelation that no one had seen coming. For some unknown reason, the Japanese survey team discovered an extensive system of cavities and tunnels inside and underneath the Great Sphinx that were believed to have been previously undiscovered. According to the team, South of the Sphinx was a hollow tunnel believed to have been two and a half meters wide and three meters tall connecting two chambers, a small and a large chamber that appears to connect to additional tunnels that stretch north, south and southeast of the Sphinx's direction. Portions of shafts were found in unconnected areas beneath the Sphinx, with additional cavities found inside the structure of the Sphinx and beneath the body of the Sphinx unconnected to the tunnels beneath the monolith. None of these findings have been pursued after the survey, with many denying the existence of the tunnels and shafts, despite the mountains of clear imaging evidence gathered underneath the direction of lead researchers. The frustrating thing about this is that there's no conclusion to the mysterious hole seen in the Sphinx's head. We know it was there as we have photographs and paintings, but as of right now only theories can be put forward for why it was sealed up. The ancient Egyptians have filled history with spectacular cultural offerings, from the pharaohs to the pyramids to the Great Sphinx itself. When we as a race discover something that's old, it's only natural to begin to wonder whether there is a little more to these incredible pieces of history than the accepted truths. Who knows what really lurks in the mysterious ancient catacombs beneath the Sphinx? Perhaps one day we might find out. Until that time though we can only put forward our theories as to why these chambers have been kept a secret from the public. Robert Bigelow, a businessman and a UFO enthusiast purchased a ranch in 1996 at $200,000 where he established the National Institute for Discovery Science and installed substantial surveillance. At the time, he may not have realized what he was getting himself into, but this would be the start of an ongoing investigation, one in which has opened his eyes to some of the more mysterious things living on our planet. This ranch is known as Skinwalker Ranch, and researchers and investigators who have conducted tests on the ranch have said there's something going on there, with various people coming forward with their impossible to explain encounters that in their opinion points to the fact that there's something otherworldly going on in and around this ranch. Bigelow and his team of researchers ultimately experienced more than 100 incidents on this property, but could not amass evidence that would be credible for scientific publication, something that other researchers who investigated the ranch also struggled with. Bigelow later sold the ranch in 2016 of $4.5 million, when Bigelow has been interviewed about the ranch, he's gone on to detail that there's definitely a presence there, and seeing a mysterious portal and unidentified flying objects isn't uncommon. In fact, when he was interviewed back in 2017, he was asked whether he believes in aliens, in which he responded, I'm absolutely convinced. He was then asked, do you believe that UFOs have come to Earth? He responded with the following, there has been and is an existing presence, an ET presence, and I spent millions and millions of dollars. I probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the United States has ever spent on this subject. I've had a close encounter with a UFO. It really sped up and came right to their face, and filled up the entire windshield of the car, and it then took off at a right angle and shot off into the distance. End quote. When asked where we can find alien life, he said that it's right under our noses. Interestingly, it's not just Bigelow that said it's tough to present evidence of the strange happenings on the ranch. Others who have been there have said there always seems to be something wrong when one of these events happens. One researcher posted the following statement. 
during the early 2000s, I was sent in as part of a team to investigate Skinwalker Ranch. When our team was carrying out tests on the ranch, we encountered mysterious lights, along with various other things. Early on in the investigation, we noticed these blue UFOs flying around the sky that were able to suddenly stop and then fly away at extreme speeds. However, when the team tried to take photographs and videos, we noticed that the equipment would stop working. Fast forward a week and once again we observed strange lights in the sky. However, same as before, when we went to take some photographs, the battery on our cameras suddenly drained. We then had cameras around the property and had them running 24-7. Fast forward two weeks and again more mysterious lights could be seen in the sky. Once we checked the footage that had been recording the ranch, we discovered that the videos had cut out a matter of seconds before the crafts arrived. We found that this was something that kept happening. There was always something that would stop us from getting evidence. I now understand what people mean when they say that the ranch feels alive. It always felt like we were being played with. End quote. According to NID's investigators, the private scientific research team deployed at the Skinwalker Ranch during its 20-year investigation for Bigelow Airspace and the United States government's Department of Defense. The Skinwalker, a creature that was seen in and around the ranch, could very well be an interdimensional creature that hops between universes and uses hidden portals found within the mountains, forests and national parks of our country as entry and exit points into our world. In the documentary The Hunt for the Skinwalker Ranch, Nid's researchers claimed that while positioned on a ridge overlooking a basin, the team began to notice what they described as hovering balls of white light, and these were through night vision goggles pointed towards one of the middle homesteads on the property. As it hovered around four feet of the ground, the witness claimed that the white ball of light began to open up into an estimated three foot wide circular portal. However, on the night vision goggles, a device that can detect and measure near infrared and ultraviolet radiation, the portal appeared to be more like a three dimensional tunnel hovering above the ground. The researchers then described that an eight foot tall, completely black humanoid creature slowly began to crawl out of the three dimensional tunnel, elbowing its way through the portal. The creature then grabbed the edges of the tunnel pulled itself through and dropped down four feet before running into the darkness. Shortly thereafter, the portal began to close in on itself, forming a bright white ball of light before fading in intensity and disappearing completely. Taking into account this strange sighting and encounter witnessed by the NIDS investigators, could this mean that the Skinwalker creature is in fact an interdimensional species that continues to invade our world via the use of self-creating wormholes? If wormholes could in fact be created by the creatures, Einstein had once theorized that due to the nature of the universe as a fabric of space and time, a wormhole could theoretically do more than just connect two points of space in a universe, and could also connect two points in time. According to the NIDS reports, there appears to be a substantial amount of evidence for strange connections between the distant past and present across the Skinwalker Ranch. Families who also lived on the ranch before it was purchased would detail seeing strange looking creatures, along with things like bright unidentified flying objects. Could this mean that the skinwalker once thought to only inhabit the Americas, made its way to the rest of the world? In an effort to tie this creature with even more modern sightings, stories of the Dogman Beast, a creature that is commonly seen as a derivative of the werewolf legends of the recent past, seems to contain direct links to that of the Skinwalker. Thousands of tourists visit the Amazon rainforest every year. Although when we think of the Amazon we might have images of lush forests, there's various other things that people must think of before visiting this area. It's suggested that you get a guide, as they can tell you the areas that you should visit and the areas that you should stay away from. The teacher from England visited the Amazon rainforest and left chilling messages on her Facebook account. This was moments before she would go missing. 
It was only in the days following her disappearance that the authorities would learn the truth about what happened. Emma Kelty was 43 when she disappeared in the Amazon rainforest. Shortly before she went missing, she left the following messages on her Facebook account. So in or near Kowari, I will have my boat stolen and I will be killed too. Nice. End quote. Shortly after this though, it's been revealed that she thought she was in the clear, but it turned out she was heading into an area known for pirate attacks, and also traffickers. She then said the following, got through town no problem and just took a sigh of relief, and then turned a corner and found 50 guys in motorboats with arrows. My face must have been a picture. Okay, 30 guys, but either way, that's a lot of folks in one area in boats with arrows and rifles. At 1am, such a dramatic change in one day. But such is the river, every kilometre is different. And just because one area is bad, it doesn't mean the rest is. End quote. Although the messages seem light-hearted in that she was trying to make the best out of a bad situation, it said she did this as she was travelling alone and was likely trying to make herself feel better. Sadly, she would go missing shortly after the messages. The air in which she went missing is known for trafficking humans, and other dark activities. At the time, it wasn't known what happened to her, but one of the locals who went by the name of Costa said he'd spoken to one of the local gangsters and he told him that on the morning of her disappearance he and others were responsible for what happened. He said the following. He said he was one of the four men. The woman had put her tent on the beach in exactly the area where the Columbia traffickers go through, and which is crawling with pirates who wait for them to arrive to her tank. These men aren't pirates though, they are just substance users. We are all shocked that these men from our community did such a terrible thing to this woman. When the men saw her tent, they thought it belonged to a Colombian with substances, so they started firing from around 50 meters away. The woman was hit in the arm. She started waving frantically and screaming for help. End quote. The man then goes on to detail that when they approached the woman, they demanded to know where the substances were and when she couldn't answer, they then had their way with her, and then took her life. After this, they threw her into the Amazon. Costa then said the following. The men fled into the forest after we all found out what they had done. We provided the police with the details and their identities. We're all disgusted by what they've done. The men were also playing around with an SOS device. They didn't know how it worked, so were messing around with it and pushing buttons. One of them must have pushed the button which transmitted an alert that she was in trouble. In turn, the company that received it alerted the Navy, along with the exact location where the button was pushed. Without that, it would have been very difficult to know where in this vast air of jungle that she'd gone missing. It would have probably remained an unsolved mystery and they would have likely never been brought to justice. The place where she disappeared is a very complicated area. It's difficult to access and there's no telephones or mobile signals. The criminals thought they could take her life in impunity, but then they stupidly pressed the only button which could have turned them into the police. End quote. It's an incredibly sad end. Emma still had years of her life left, and was someone who clearly loved giving back. Unfortunately, these stories are all too common throughout these areas. There's also a strong belief in spirits in the afterlife in these regions. So if locals feel like you're associated with the wrong belief, they may take your life. One story that the locals in Brazil believe in is that of a Brazilian spirit that is described as having long stringy black hair and bright glowing red eyes that have been described as looking like that of a fire. Reports from locals vary depending on who you talk to. Some claim that it can only be encountered in the deeper jungles as it drops from the trees and attempts to latch onto those who pass underneath. 
whereas others claim the entity will run at you and latch onto you. These superstitions may sound far-fetched, but those who live in the area take them seriously. The origin of this story seems to be shrouded in mystery, as no one is really certain as to what exactly causes the presence of the entity. It's said that after it touches a victim, it will mysteriously vanish and disappear without a trace, leaving many who have encountered it confused noting that it may have been a strange dream or a hallucination. Others claim that this entity will hide in the nearby trees, waiting for someone to walk past, so they can drop down and latch onto them. Becoming a target of this entity will certainly make your life a misery. It's also said that those who get touched by it will also get ill, and that there's no known cure for the mysterious illness. Although these just sound like stories, Many have passed down information that some who have entered the Amazon have lost their minds, solidifying the locals' beliefs that this entity is behind such accounts. It's fair to say that at this point the general public is waking up to some of the things that our governments did in the past. These have been released through various networks, mainly declassification channels, and it's helped us to understand how and why government officials were doing these tests. Many different theories have been put forward over the years for why our governments did these kinds of experiments, and the majority of the answers that are given is so that we can expand our knowledge. When people first questioned our governments on these experiments, 99% of the time they denied they were ever doing anything, and labelled those that pushed for answers as conspiracy theorists. This label has carried on into modern times, and is almost used as an insult to those that want to dig deeper. Take Project MKUltra for example. MKUltra sought to alter a person's mind to gain control over them. In other words, the US government and CIA were working together to use mind control as a kind of weapon. Those who questioned their true intentions were turned down and labelled as crazy or conspiracy theorists. The irony being that it could be argued that the scientists behind the MKUltra project were actually the crazy ones, and those who said that the United States government were conducting mind control experiments were actually the ones in the right. This has happened time and time again throughout history. Someone says something that sounds crazy, they are then labelled as being delusional or a conspiracy theorist, but then eventually the truth comes out and what they were saying the whole time was actually the truth. This is just one example. It's no secret that scientists have gone past that ethical line in the name of research, and one that's at the centre of many theories is animal hybrids. One interesting experiment that's allegedly been carried out by some of the world's best scientists is that of the human Z. One US scientist claimed that it's been done, and that scientists and researchers have managed to breed a human and a chimp to create the human Z. Psychologist Gordon G. Gulp Jr. detailed that he was talking with a former professor when he said he'd been involved with some interesting research, and this centred around creating a hybrid chimp. This happened at an animal research lab. It's a known fact that human and chimp DNA is very similar. In fact, evolutionary biologists have said that humans and chimps share 98.8% of their DNA. Gordon Gallup went on to note though that this hybrid was created in secret. He said that years of research showed the team that it was possible that this hybrid could exist, and so they went ahead and created it. Gordon said it was done by artificial insemination. The creature that was birthed was then called a human Z. The scientists however soon started to worry about the implications of the project, and what this creature would turn into. Gordon said the project was soon stopped and that the human Z was wiped out. When questioned about the story, Gordon said that it came from a scientist that he knew very well, and that this individual was someone he trusted and who had a credible record. When researchers questioned the primate centre where the tests were allegedly carried out, they denied that this happened. Not really surprising when you consider that what they were doing was probably done with the utmost secret and those involved were probably sworn to secrecy. 
Those that have looked into this story have said it may have been the case that those working at the Primate Center may not have been aware this was going on, and that the scientists involved in creating the human Z may have taken precautions so their tests wouldn't be exposed. Gordon said the following about the project. In the matter of days or a few weeks, they began to consider the moral and ethical considerations, and the infant was put down. He told me the rumors were true, and he was a credible scientist in his own right. End quote. As of right now, he has no hard evidence that these tests were carried out. But as some have said, for every secret project we know about, there's probably dozens that will never see the light. When you think that the mind control experiments were happening over 60 years ago, you can't help but wonder what other tests and experiments have been conducted. Interestingly, going back a few years ago, biologists took it upon themselves to carry out a test which would show them what a chicken and dinosaur hybrid would look like. This is the first step in understanding how we could create a 21st century dinosaur and what the creature would look like. The scientists working on the project were able to isolate clusters of genes that aid in facial development. The team was then able to discover a way of stopping them in the chicken's embryos. And after doing this, what they were left with was an animal that looked very similar to what a Velociraptor would have looked like. The lead author of the study, Bart Andrebala, from Yale University, said the following. We'd not set out to create a dinosaur chicken. When examining an important evolutionary transformation, we wanted to find out about the underlying process. The biggest part of the avian skeleton that most extensively and radically diversed. We wanted to find out if the beak was functional. End quote. The scientists wanted to highlight the fact that the beaks develop in a much different way to snails. This is because they use different sets of genes. This proves that the beak is an adaption, as opposed to being a nose shape that is slightly different. Michael Benton from the Bristol University in the UK said the following. I believe that the move from snout to beak occurred roughly 40 to 50 million years after the Archaeopteryx. As of right now, the scientists have said they have no plans to hatch these raptor-looking chickens. The scientists went on to say the following. These weren't drastic modifications. They are far less weird than many breeds of chickens developed by chicken hobbyists. The rest of the animal looked okay but one needs to think about this carefully from an ethical point of view." End quote. Man has created many technological wonders, the SR-71 being one of them. It's arguably one of the most impressive aircrafts that we've created, even more so when you consider it was created during the 1960s. The Blackbird was designed, developed, and manufactured by the famous Lockheed Corporation. At the time of being made, the SR-71 was developed under a Black project, and was led by Kelly Johnson, who was head of Lockheed Skunk Works units located in Burbank, California. What the team created was a plane that was able to reach speeds of 3,529 km per hour, or 2,200 miles per hour. As mentioned on NASA's website, two SR-71 aircrafts have been used by NASA as test beds for high speed. The aircraft in SR-71A and an SR-71B pilot trainer aircraft are based at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center. They have been loaned to NASA by the US Air Force. Developed for the United States Air Force as reconnaissance aircraft more than 30 years ago, SR-71s are still the world's fastest and highest flying production aircraft. The aircraft can fly more than 2,200 miles per hour, Mach 3 plus or more than three times the speed of sound, and at altitudes of over 85,000 feet. This operating environment makes the aircraft excellent platforms to carry out research and experiments in a variety of areas, aerodynamics, propulsion, structures, thermal protection materials, high speed and high temperature instrumentation, atmospheric studies and sonic boom characterization. Data from the SR-71 high speed research program 
will be used to aid designers of future supersonic hypersonic aircraft and propulsion systems, including a high-speed civil transport. The SR-71 program at Dryden is part of NASA's overall high-speed aeronautical research program, and projects involve other NASA research centers, other government agencies, universities and commercial firms. End quote. However, this incredible plane was retired by the Air Force in 1990. Something interesting to note is that no SR-71 has ever been lost or damaged. One sentence that's often accompanied with this plane is that it's too fast for enemies to take down. The main reason given for why this plane was put into retirement is because of high costs, saying that in today's money this plane would cost somewhere in the region of $250 million. As of right now, this plane is the fastest that man has ever created. Or is it? Whispers of Black Project aircraft have been around for years now, and bearing in mind that the SR-71 was created over 60 years ago, it makes you wonder what we have now. Its replacement is said to be the Aurora, although it's important to note that the US government has denied that the aircraft exists. Eyewitnesses, however, have gone against this. Back in 1991, residents located in Southern California heard a series of unusual sonic booms, and interestingly, the United States Geological Survey even picked them up on their sensors. NASA and the Air Force came forward and said it wasn't their SR-71B, as it was not operating on the day the booms happened. Former NASA sonic boom expert Don Magaliri, who went on to study the sonic boom data at the California Institute of Technology, said that the data showed this craft was at an altitude of around 90,000 feet, and was hitting Mach 5. Mach 5 means it was going 6,174 km per hour, or 3,836 miles per hour. It's these types of stories that back up the claims that the Aurora project is genuine. There's said to be one more craft that's even faster than this. Another craft that's also shrouded in mystery is that of the mysterious Black Triangle, also known by some as the TR-3B Black Manta. These Black Triangles are associated with UFOs, and have been reported for the last few decades by people from various locations across our planet. In fact, researchers have said they're some of the most common UFOs reported, Sightings of them follow a similar theme. People report seeing giant triangular objects in the sky that are completely silent. Sometimes they're just sitting in the sky motionless, while others are seen leaving a location at extremely high speeds. Interestingly, those who have researched these objects have said they come in waves, and that for a short period of time many people will report seeing them. There have been around 4,000 reports of the Triangle since the 1990s in the UK alone. There have also been waves of Triangles in Belgium, France, Holland and Germany. Now there is some confusion between the Aurora aircraft and the mysterious Black Triangle. Some researchers have said the two are actually different, saying that there's various differences. For example, eyewitnesses say the Aurora aircraft gives off unusual sonic booms, can be seen leaving contrails and doesn't come close to the ground. The black triangles, however, don't appear to make any sound at all, are able to hover motionless and close to the ground, are said to be much faster than any aircraft ever witnessed, and don't leave behind contrails. Pilots have even come forward with their encounters with these mysterious black triangles, with one pilot detailing that while flying over Florida in a passenger plane, a silent large triangular shaped craft passed above his plane. He estimated that the craft in question was easily going at speeds exceeding 2,500 miles per hour, and said that he's never seen anything like it before. One of the problems with this aircraft is that we know it exists, and those who have debated the topic aren't sure which is more impressive. The fact that our government owns a craft that's able to travel at these incredible speeds, or that it belongs to something unknown. Various questions remain though. 
How are these crafts able to hover motionless in the sky without making a sound? How can they go from a standstill to thousands of miles per hour within seconds? And why does no one seem to know anything about them? Another mystery surrounding these crafts is that they're able to seemingly sneak into restricted airspace. Chris Mellon, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence during the Clinton and George W. Bush administrations, said that these black triangles have been observed flying over bases, only for the Air Force to scramble jets to chase them off. With these black triangles being able to easily outmaneuver these jets, it's incredible to think it was only back in 1903 that the Wright brothers had their first flight. Fast forward 60 years and we had the incredibly quick and sophisticated SR-71. It's unbelievable that within the span of just 60 years we were able to achieve what we did. It's been 60 years since the SR-71 was created. So is it really out of the realm of possibilities that we would be able to create something much faster than the SR-71? Every year new interesting discoveries are made, but some of these even divide scientists, and don't ever get fully explained. This is what happened when a mysterious looking creature was discovered in Russia. The odd looking creature was found in the Leningrad region, in the town of Sosnovy Bor. The town was built in the 1950s to serve the Leningrad nuclear plant. A woman by the name of Tamara said she was the one who found it, and said she came across it while she was wading in shallow waters close to the nuclear power plant. As she picked up the creature, she couldn't identify what it was, and so showed her friend who said it looked like an undeveloped animal, suggesting that it may have been something like a mutant chicken embryo. Biologist Yugar Zajarev at the Institute of Biophysics was puzzled, saying the following, It seems that this body is neither fish or fowl, this creature has a mysterious skull, no neck and no wings. Extensive studies are needed to determine what kind of creature or organism this is. End quote. The creature soon started to get the attention of scientists and researchers, and it was then sent to Moscow for further studies. The chicken embryo theory is the one that's used by most people to explain what this creature is, but as pointed out by locals, the Leningrad nuclear plant has a history of covering things up, and it's even led some to suggest that the area around the plant is dangerous for wildlife, leading to these abnormalities that officials would want to keep under wraps. According to a former Russian federal investigator for nuclear and radiation safety, Vladimir Konstov said the area has a dark history, and one that officials don't want the public knowing about. Three people had lost their lives when a cooling unit ruptured. On top of this, there's been various fires, and even radiation spills that were detected over four miles away from the plant. Researchers have said these spills could deform some of the local wildlife. Others said that perhaps animal testing was going on in the area, and one of these creatures managed to escape, eventually being found by the woman in the nearby river. As of right now, there's not much information that can be found on this mysterious creature, with amateur researchers saying that it looks like officials may have found something out about this creature that they don't want the public to know about. One person said the following, It's strange how this creature was having tests done on it and being sent to labs, but now we have no answer for what they found. I've never seen a creature that looks like this. End quote. As of right now, it's anyone's guess as to what this odd-looking creature is, and whether it's the result of a chemical spill, an undeveloped embryo or perhaps extraterrestrial in nature. The oceans and rivers of the world are some of the most mysterious places, and over the years people have discovered and encountered strange things, that not only baffled them but also the researchers who have gone on to investigate them. One such creature has become known as the Black Demon Shark, over the last 20 years, it's been spotted off the shores of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. These reports and sightings have been made by a number of fishermen across the Mexican coast that claim to see a massive black shark roughly 60 feet in length and resembling the build of a great white shark, 
but with that of a dark coloration across its body and a massively sized fin. Given the fact that many of these reports fit many of the modern day recreations using megalodon skeletons, it's led many to believe that it could be a possible hunting ground for the creature. Additionally, many of the fishermen that have reported this sighting have often been veterans in the field, never having once claimed such sightings in the past, and having more than enough experience with different species of whales throughout the region. What's interesting about these reports is that we have proof that at one point in time these creatures were swimming in our oceans. Going back in the 1960s, there appear to be another widely reported sightings of a megalodon creature in the modern day. According to the report, a captain of a 50 foot long fishing ship claimed that a massive white shark, larger than the boat itself, passed by while the captain and crew were sitting at anchor. When people began to question the captain and claim that it had been nothing more than a whale, he continued to claim he was an experienced fisherman and was well aware of what a whale looked like. He confirmed that it was indeed a larger shark, and that it was not similar to that of a whale of any kind. Some people who have researched these cases have said these individuals encountered everyday wildlife, but as some have pointed out, it's very unlikely these people would mistake everyday wildlife for a giant shark. As of today, it's not known what these individuals encountered. Scientists have said the giant megalodon shark is now extinct, and hasn't been in our oceans for at least a couple million years. Yet, well-seasoned fishermen are clearly seeing something. Other fishermen have come forward and said they think there may be giant great white sharks that are being misidentified. Some have claimed to have seen great white sharks pushing 30 to 40 feet. Marine officials have said this is a more likely answer, but still question this theory as great white sharks are said to reach a maximum length of 20 feet. However, according to J.E. Randall, the largest great white shark reliably measured was found in Ledge Point, Western Australia in 1987, and is said to have measured at least 6 metres. Around a decade later in 1988, the Canadian Shark Research Centre captured and verified a large female great white shark. This was off the coast of Alberta and Prince Edward Island, and it measured 6.1 metres. Furthermore, a great white captured off the coast of Malta in 1987 is said to have measured an estimated 7.13 metres. Photographic evidence of the shark dubbed Malta was thoroughly examined and was found to confirm this estimation, even suggesting it was larger than previously thought. This suggests that great white sharks can grow up to 7 metres, a vast jump from the previous known size of 4.9 to 6.1 metres. So what do you make of this mysterious creature that was discovered in Russia? Do you think it's an embryo of something like a chicken? Do you think the chemical spills had something to do with it looking like this? Or do you think it may be extraterrestrial in nature? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. If you're someone who doesn't want to work a corporate job, and doesn't like the idea of working 9-5, then becoming an archaeologist might be your calling. Archaeologists are responsible for some of history's most incredible finds. Every so often though they come across some strange artefacts. One of those is that of the Paraka skull, which are best known for their elongated look. One photograph is making the round showing what looks like a piece of metal which has been embedded inside the skull. It quickly got shared by people who said it then looked like a large microchip, or it could be some type of ancient technology that was used by our ancestors. Although many labelled the photograph as fake, saying that it was likely photoshopped in order to get it like this, the image is actually real, and was first posted by the Museum of Osteology. The Museum of Osteology made the post on social media, and since putting it up it's gone viral. They said the following in the post. Not on public display. 
a proven elongated skull with metal surgically implanted after returning from battle, estimated to be from around 2000 years ago. One of our more interesting and older pieces in the collection. We don't have a ton of background on this piece, but we do know he survived the procedure. Based on the broken bone structure surrounding the repair, you can see that it's tightly fused together. It was a successful surgery. End quote. Many commented on the post saying how incredible this artifact is, but were equally confused as to how such a procedure would be carried out. One person said the following, What type of metal is this? Has that been tested? How did they manage to get this inside someone during a time like this? It looks very well done. End quote. While another person said the following, this metal inlay is incredible. It really shows us how little we know about our ancient history. Who would have thought that something like this was possible? It's incredible to think the person survived this. I'm not sure though I'd like to have a piece of metal fused to my skull without anaesthetic. It makes you wonder what other discoveries are out there waiting to be found. End quote. This isn't the only interesting find in regards to these skulls. Researchers who work closely with the Prakas skulls have said they've made some new discoveries. These skulls were first discovered in the Prakas region of Peru, a desert on the south coast of the country. Giulio Otello, a proven archaeologist, was the first to discover these astonishing skulls in 1928. What initially stood out as the most unusual among the skulls, was that they were the longest and most protracted skulls to have ever been found before. Over 300 were found, dating back between 2,000 and 3,000 years old. It wasn't until 2014 when DNA testing revealed unusual findings. It showed that they have mitochondrial DNA, with strange mutations that have not been seen in animals or humans before. The elongated skulls were just the tip of the iceberg, while skulls may become elongated due to deformities or applying force on the skull for a long period of time, this was certainly not the case with the Paraka skulls. A researcher by the name of Ellie Marzulli took note of more than a few characteristics that don't fit the norm for a standard human skull. The eye sockets were found to be much larger. The cheekbones were much more pronounced and the skulls weighed 60% more than that of a normal human skull. He also looked to a specific point of the skull known as the foramen magnum. On a human skull is situated closer to the jawline, whereas it was closer to the back of the skull on the Paracas ones. After studying over 1,000 skulls, archaeologists also noticed that the foramen magnum was smaller, leading them to theorize that it's a genetic trait. This caused them to further research the Paracas skulls investigating every part in great detail. Experts eventually noticed that they were missing a sagittal suture, which is found on all human skulls. It is a piece of tissue that connects the two parietal bones in the skull. Although not all parietal skulls were devoid of a sagittal suture, most didn't appear to have one at all. This brought upon more confusion and intrigue to those involved in the research. As research continued, Three skulls were used to sample DNA, one of which was an infant dating back 800 to 2000 years ago. Hair and bone powder were extracted from the frame and magnum, whilst wearing protective clothing to ensure the samples wouldn't be contaminated. The samples were sent to three different labs in Canada and the United States, and the geneticists weren't given many details to reduce the risk of creating preconceived notions about the skulls. The DNA results were nothing short of fascinating. They came back explaining that one of the samples found that the hair samples wasn't a sequence found in human DNA. However, the other samples were showing that they came mostly from Eastern Europe and some from Western Europe. When looking at the bone powder, they found that it originated from Mesopotamia, otherwise known as Syria. Many questions still remain. People are torn over the 2014 DNA analysis of the recovered skulls, 
that showed that gathered DNA from the remains contained mutations that did not match any known human or primate DNA samples previously recorded. Although the DNA testing was immediately put into question by the scientific community, the lead researcher stands by the results and asks for those within the scientific community to confirm his findings and take their own test to show the validity of his claims. It may still take many years before experts are able to provide an adequate explanation for the unusual findings, with some saying that the Prakash skulls will remain a mystery, so we'll have to draw our own conclusions for now. Who knows, maybe this discovery will bring about more news and provide us with the insight needed to better understand the human race and our untraceable history. Residents all around Las Vegas have reported seeing mysterious lights. Some of the first reports came in on the 1st of March, when people posted photographs and videos of large balls of lights in the sky, noting that whatever these lights belonged to they were big, and that they stayed in a strict V formation. This caused others to say that these lights may have been part of one craft, further saying that if this was the case this single object would have been huge. The lights were reported by people on different sides of Sin City on Monday the 1st of March, with local residents saying the lights appeared at around 7.30pm. It soon started to trend on social media, with users wanting to know what the lights were. Due to Nellis Air Force Base being close, some suggested that they may have been flares, but this doesn't match up with eyewitness testimonies. One man who said he works with the Department of Homeland Security told several media outlets that the lights bear no resemblance to the military flares that he's experienced in the past, with others coming forward and saying that the lights didn't act like typical military flares, as they were very stationary and didn't move around like a normal flare does. After people started to demand answers for what was seen above Las Vegas, the Federal Aviation Administration did respond to those asking questions, and said that the lights from the Las Vegas Valley were flares from the NW military ranges. One person said the following, On Monday, me and my wife looked up directly above downtown Las Vegas and saw multiple lights. We weren't the only ones who saw these as I soon reached out to a friend and they said they'd seen the same thing. These glowing orbs were hovering in a perfect formation for what I would say was around 5 minutes. When I spoke to my friend who had also seen these lights, we both found it interesting how remarkably similar they were to the famous Phoenix lights. I for one don't think these were flares. I've observed military flares in the past, and these lights didn't drift or emit any smoke. Not everyone bought this answer though and said that various V-shaped UFOs had been observed in the past, and when questioned about it, officials normally blame the lights on things like flares. This soon created an interesting discussion, where people compared these lights to similar looking lights that have been reported in the past. Those who study and investigate UFOs have said these shaped crafts are some of the most commonly shaped UFOs, and that most researchers agree that these lights are not individual objects, but rather belong to one large craft. There's still ongoing discussions within these groups as to whether V-shaped crafts and the triangle-shaped crafts are the same, with some amateur researchers saying that V-shaped crafts are more slender and have lights running up the entire craft, while the triangle UFO seems to have three distinctive lights which are usually white or red in colour. Another question that often comes up is who do these crafts belong to? Those who have studied this topic have said there's an argument for both sides, with some saying that these belong to us and they're part of a top secret program. Interestingly, black triangles aren't anything new. Black triangle UFOs are a type of craft that have been seen in our skies for years now, and although we have various photographs and videos of them, there's still many unanswered questions. For example, how are they able to travel at the speeds they do? How are they able to use camouflage tech? And how can they hover motionless in one area without making a sound? It's these questions that have led some to think they don't belong to us. After all, we currently don't have any aircrafts that's able to match what these crafts do. 
these black triangles are hundreds of years more advanced than our current tech. So where did these things come from? And how are they able to achieve what they do? At this moment in time, no military has come forward to claim it's them who's behind these sightings. But most UFO researchers think these black triangles are part of a secret program, and this is their latest creation. However, sightings and encounters have gone against this, saying that these crafts have been observed in our skies for decades. In fact, there's even photographs of these triangles that were taken back in 1945, with pilots from these times coming forward and detailing their strange encounters with strange triangular shaped crafts. Not only does this mean that these crafts are at least 80 years old, but it also means that if they belong to us, our governments were using advanced tech in a time when the rest of the world had basic aircrafts. How did we have this type of tech during a time when battles were taking place using basic aeroplanes? As mentioned, it's one of the reasons that some UFO researchers believe these crafts don't belong to us. In fact, even military officials have come forward and detailed their encounters with them, demanding an answer for what they encountered. Many of these eyewitnesses would say these triangle-shaped crafts seem interested in their planes. Then when they tried to get closer, the crafts would vanish within seconds, easily being much faster than the planes during those times. Interestingly, this led to these objects being given the name of Foo Fighters. As mentioned earlier, commercial airline pilots have also detailed their strange encounters with these large triangular shaped crafts with one pilot saying that he was flying above Florida when he saw one of these crafts fly past him at speeds exceeding 4,000 miles per hour. He said that he watched as this thing covered the curvature of the earth within a matter of seconds. He said that he'd never seen anything so quick in his life. Soldiers are easily some of the bravest people on the planet. They're sent to places that many of us will never visit and see man-made horrors play out in front of their eyes. Although soldiers have hundreds of stories to tell, some of the most interesting ones are those that detail mysterious creatures. One interesting account is that of military soldiers that encountered a mysterious being. The story goes that back in 2002, a military unit encountered a giant being in Kandahar. American soldiers were trekking up a mountainside when they saw signs of a large being. These included things like large footprints. As the soldiers went to investigate the area, they said they could hear loud grunting noises. Shortly after this, the team said they were ambushed by a large humanoid. They reported it was around 13 feet tall and had red hair. It had six fingers on each hand and was hostile towards the military unit. One of the men unfortunately didn't make it as he was pierced by the giant's large spear. The giant was said to be dressed in animal skins. The reason the team was in the area was because another military unit had gone missing, and so a rescue mission was planned to see what happened and hopefully bring back any survivors. After the soldier got pierced with the spear, it then turned his attention to the rest of the group. The others quickly fired at the giant, hitting it all over its body. They continued to do this until the giant dropped to its knees. After this, the unit reported it to their superiors. They gave them clear instructions to hide the body and stay near it, ensuring that no one nearby saw what they were trying to hide. After this, the body was taken to a secure location, and high-up officials told the soldiers that they were never to speak of this again. Another strange encounter is that of the jinn. According to the ancient scriptures seen throughout the Middle East, the jinn are often referred to as the people of the fire, and seem to be as old as the universe itself. Scholars have noted that the word jinn most likely comes from the Arabic root word jan, to which roughly translates to mean to hide or to conceal, which gives us a clue as to the nature of the jinn of which were often regarded as creatures of whom would attempt to conceal themselves from man. The Quran then clarifies that the existence of the jinn first came about during the act of the creation of the universe, and that the jinn came into existence after being created from a smokeless fire, similar to that of electricity and much purer energy. 
These stories, in fact, match that of the Judaism interpretation of the creation of Lucifer, of whom was also crafted from fire, and not that of light similar to other angels. The jinn were then described as being more accurately referred to as the people of the fire, and that they would exist in a plane that rested slightly above us but still within our world, slightly out of the reach of any natural senses. Additional information as to the origin and spreading of the jinn gets a little hazy, but references are made of the jinn assisting ruthless kings and rulers, and even helping with the building and construction of many cities and places of immense power. Given the fact that the jinn are often described as being unable to be seen or sensed by our natural senses, and constantly attempting to evade detection of all kind, it's no surprise then that the main focus of the power of the jinn circles around its ability to take any form. It's believed that the jinn have the ability to take the form of any animal or person, and that they often use these tactics to get away from someone pursuing them, or to trick loved ones of an individual into doing something for them. The only way for someone to be certain of whether or not the creature is a jinn is to look into its eyes. According to legends, the jinn's eyes are constantly blazing like a fire, and that they can be seen in the eyes of any form that they take. Jinns also possess supernatural abilities, such as that of possessing an individual to take control of their body, being able to predict the future and being able to perform superhuman feats that are otherwise unexplainable in the physical world such as speed, flying vast intelligence fluency in any language and a vast amount of unending skills. Definitely seen as one of the strangest reports of modern day encounters with the jinn, was a military encounter seen in Iraq back in June of 2003. An Iraqi soldier and other fighters were stationed at the second floor of a police station, to assist with further attacks against the police. This was between the locals and the law enforcement of the city. A lot of people were confused by the sudden attacks by the police, and so one of the main purposes of the Iraqi army assisting with safety was to uncover the reasons as to why such disturbances were taking place. In one of the reports taken by an Iraqi military squad stationed for 24-7 surveillance, they claimed they encountered several jinn, of whom were watching and patrolling the station. The report details that they believed the individuals to be jinn due to the fact they had glowing red eyes, and seemed completely unfazed by the bright surveillance lights used to blind passbyers, of whom attempted to get close to this station at night. Shortly after the report was filed, the whole entire station was attacked and every soldier and police in the department passed away from injuries. It then circulated that the jinn were at the centre of the attacks, and the majority of the disturbances were caused by the jinn waging plans of attack. After the report surfaced, the attack stopped, with many locals claiming that the jinn went back into hiding after they were discovered. The Military and Bigfoot The military and Bigfoot seem to have a strange relationship. One of the last places you'd expect to see a Bigfoot would be near a military base, yet various stories have been told of these ancient creatures getting into these secret locations. And not only that, but shortly after seeing this creature, there appears to be various reports of UFO sightings throughout the area. Oddly enough, according to MUFON or the Mutual UFO Network, it appeared that the third most common sighting of an alien being was that of a Bigfoot. Many people of whom encountered strange UFO sightings wrote witness reports of saucers landing and a Bigfoot coming out, or encountering a Bigfoot in the forest only for it to disappear like a ghost and moments later to see a nearby, unidentified flying object begin to immediately take off into the sky. These cases also do not include single encounters with the Sasquatch, and only include reports regarding a definitive extraterrestrial account. It's for this reason that Bigfoot might be an extraterrestrial creature, instead of a naturally evolved one. American soldiers have gone on to detail seeing these creatures around bases and while on missions, one of the most famous creatures that resembled a Bigfoot was given the name of Rock Ape. Referred to by American soldiers as Rock Apes, consistent reports were made by a wide number of platoons of giant humanoid creatures. One veteran wrote the following report. 
serving with the 101st Airborne in the mountains of Vietnam. I saw the rock apes on many occasions. They were as large as a big man and usually were in small groups of two or three unlike Bigfoot, but were bigger than most men and smaller than Bigfoot. They were spotted on days, but would also set off our trip flares at night. End quote. A former Canadian defence minister, who has said that the world's most powerful people are concealing the presence of aliens, is asking the government to release what they know about UFOs and extraterrestrials. Paul Hellyer has an impressive background. He served as Canada's defence minister in the 1960s. He oversaw the drastic changes within the Royal Canadian Navy, Canadian Army and the Royal Canadian Air Force in which they were eventually turned into a single organisation. It's his recent comments though that have caused him to be featured in the mainstream media. Mr Hellyer started to make comments on unidentified flying objects around 2015, where he stated that these crafts are just as common as planes, going on to say that aliens have been visiting Earth for many years now, and the reason they started to take an interest in us is because of the atomic bomb. Many UFO researchers have said that when the first atomic weapons were being tested there was a huge increase in UFO sightings. Mr Hellyer, along with those who researched the phenomena, explained that when aliens saw what we were doing with atomic bombs, we suddenly became a great threat to the cosmos. In an interview with Russia Today he said the following, The reason for this was that man was stupid enough to invent the atomic bomb. Aliens are frightened that we're going to use it again and again, and this will affect the whole balance of the cosmos. End quote. Mr. Hellyer suggested that various people who worked for the United States government know what's going on, and even said that when you're put in contact with the correct people, it doesn't take long for you to get the proof. He explained that the documents he's received and the people he's talked to have told him there's between 2 and 12 different alien species and one of the reasons why people don't know about this is because the majority of them look like us. This is in line with what people have said in the past. In fact, according to the Mutual UFO Network, the second most commonly reported alien is nearly completely identical to human beings in almost every way, except for a few key differences. Referred to by MUFON as the Nordic Alien Species, the Nordic aliens are reportedly aliens that have long blonde hair, so blonde that it's commonly mistaken as being white, pale skin, deep blue eyes, and stand between 6 to 7 feet tall. The first ever reported encounter with the Nordic aliens was made back during the 1950s by a man named George Adamski, of whom would later go on to be one of the most famous ufologists, and finish a book titled Flying Sources Have Landed, and Inside the Spaceships, that would feature in-depth descriptions of his encounters throughout the 1950s. Many of those that have claimed to have encountered the Nordic aliens, or have been abducted by the species, claim that the Nordic aliens possess advanced telepathic abilities, able to communicate entire concepts and emotions with their abductees and instill them with a tremendous amount of new information. Although many claim that the species is benevolent in nature, with some claiming that the Nordic aliens are preparing to save the human race for abduction in the event of a world-changing catastrophe, there appears to be a number of doomsday cults that worship the Nordic aliens in sinister ways. Hellyer's main message though is that these aliens have the knowledge to change our planet, and that when the time comes he thinks they will step in and make the world greener. He said that high up officials told him this has to be done in the right way otherwise people won't get on board saying that information occasionally gets leaked to the public, and this is in order to get them accustomed to the idea. Many members of the alien community have speculated that perhaps the main cause for the government's continued overall lack of transparency regarding the existence of extraterrestrial visitors is due to an old report provided by the Central Intelligence Agency's Psychological Strategy Board that concluded that the public's potential reaction to unidentified flying objects could be constituted as a threat to national security. 
Interestingly, this appears to not be the case in recent years. The 1950s was a long time ago, and since then the idea of extraterrestrial visitation has been welcomed with open arms by the public, and the normalizations of such alien imagery via science fiction movies, popular comics and worldwide media has played a tremendous role in this explosion of extraterrestrial fascination. Given recent findings by programs such as the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program, it's said that the very existence of the unidentified flying objects is already a national security threat. This has caused some to be torn, saying that if these objects were really a threat then surely they would have done something by now. These talking points make for interesting discussions, but unfortunately as of right now many don't buy the idea that aliens are walking among us. Scientists, researchers and organisations like NASA have said we've never found proof of alien life. The UFO community on the other hand believes that we've been visited, and that sometime in the near future the truth will come out, saying that why would our governments open various UFO programmes and spend billions if they didn't exist? They say that there must be something going on for them to justify spending all this time and money. Interestingly, it was also announced that when the President signed the 2.3 trillion relief and government funding bill back in December, it also started the ball rolling on something else. As of that date, US intelligence agencies have just 180 days to release everything they know about UFOs, a subject that has been featured in the mainstream media in recent months. The Director of National Intelligence and Secretary are said to have been put on the spot, and will now have to reveal everything they know about these unidentified crafts. There's an unending amount of mystery surrounding our oceans. As of 2018, the Ocean Service has said that over 80% of our ocean is unexplored. Although many have said that space is one of the last unexplored frontiers, the argument could be made that our oceans also make that list. After all, we've done a great job at mapping hard-to-reach regions on our planet, but haven't managed to research certain regions of our oceans. This has caused amateur researchers to use apps such as Google Earth in the hopes of finding something of interest. Every year, people manage to capture strange photographs, leaving those who see them confused and wanting answers. Although the majority of these eventually get answers, there's a fair amount that remain a mystery. This interesting photo was recently shared to Facebook, and it shows a large structure that could be seen via Google Earth. However, the person who discovered it couldn't explain what they were looking at. At first, they thought the pattern may have been caused by something like a trawler boat, but it wasn't until they zoomed out they realised how big these lines were. The man said the following in his post, I was having a look through Google Earth recently and noticed this strange pattern off the coast of Antarctica. It stood out to me because it didn't look like any of the natural features that were nearby. Something that surprised me as well is that I hardly had to zoom in to see this thing. I did a measurement and the structure is over 285 kilometers in length. I showed one of my friends who fishes and he said it doesn't match typical trawler patterns. I'm not someone who normally looks for this kind of stuff, but I found the image interesting and thought I'd share it. I'm hoping that someone can help me figure out what this thing is. End quote. This isn't the first time that these large structures have been discovered on Google Earth, and in the majority of cases they do turn out to be things such as trawler bones. However, when we compare these lines to those created by trawlers, there's a big difference. Those who saw the images noted that trawler ships typically leave behind wavy lines, as opposed to these straight parallel lines. Another person said that whatever this thing is, it appears to have some symmetry to it, and you don't usually see features like this in nature. They went on to note that after viewing the images, you can also see sharp turns and edges. This person said the following, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration may have been carrying out work in the area. Whatever this thing is though, it's very big. End quote. 
Others compared this to a similar grid-like pattern that was discovered off the coast of Cyprus. Back in 2011, an interesting post was made by a user that noticed strange and unusual ocean floor grid patterns. This grid pattern appeared to span 60 miles in width and 65 miles in length, and had numerous different right angles all across its formation. The post then goes on for several more paragraphs talking about how the carvings all throughout the area appear to be artificially created, with what is described as being similar to those of paved streams, walkways and a number of smaller squares all throughout the region, that also seem to have 90 degree angle turns, and look like modern day property lots. However, after years of people speculating that this could have been an ancient civilization among other things, Google worked the images from its database and said it was nothing of interest, and that it had been created due to overlapping datasheets, and those who suggested it was Atlantis were looking too deep into this. As mentioned, this isn't the first time that a strange discovery like this has been made. One idea that's been put forward is that these structures could actually be part of an underwater base. Underwater bases sounds like the work of fiction or something you'd hear in a movie, but the reality is there's many secret bases scattered across our planet, some of which the everyday public don't know about. Some amateur researchers have even said it's likely that governments do have underwater bases, and that this wouldn't be out of the scope due to the advantages they have. For example, recently there's been images captured of a Chinese submarine departing an underwater base, which revealed that the idea of underwater bases is very much a reality, and cause some to say that if China's done it, it's likely that other countries have too, or will follow in their footsteps. Then there's those people that suggest that underwater bases aren't built for or used by us, but rather they're being used by an advanced race that call this planet home. One of the most interesting underwater discoveries is that of the Malibu underwater base. This anomaly started to make headlines when it was first discovered, and that's because people labelled it as an underwater alien base, and this is one of those cases where you can understand why. At first glance the object does look to resemble that of a building, with what appears to be large pillars holding up the bulk of the object. The discovery was made 6 miles off the coast of Point Doom in Malibu, California. The object pretty much sits on the seabed, looks to be oval in shape and is pretty large. Google Earth images revealed that this object is in fact massive, measuring in at around 3 miles in length, having what appears to be pillars and even a large entrance. It's not hard to imagine why various theories have been put forward to try and explain it. According to various websites that look into UFOs, they suggest the massive structure is a UFO or a USO base. Many people have heard of unidentified flying objects, but many may not be aware of unidentified submerged objects. These are unidentified flying objects that are seen in and around oceans, with some people even claiming that they've seen these crafts enter the water without making a splash. It's not just random people who have reported seeing these crafts either. People in the military have seen these large crafts enter the water without making a sound, and even reported them staying under the water for several hours. It's these types of reports that have caused some to think that there's bases under our oceans, and that perhaps they could be part of something much bigger. However, not everyone agrees with the idea that this is linked to USOs, with David Swatchov, the US Geological Survey coming forward and saying the following. I didn't see anything special about it. I think it's because it looks like there's a flat surface, and then below it it looks like there's these vertical columns, so somebody can say, oh look, it's the entrance to something special. There's no flag under the water that says I'm an entrance to an alien base. There's nothing unnatural looking about it. It's just showing some sort of variation in the offshore coastal morphology. End quote. Bringing animals back to life will always be a controversial topic. Those in favour will say it gives us a chance to study them, and understand what life would have been like thousands of years ago, while others say we should just let them rest, 
and that there's a reason they were wiped out in the first place. Russian scientists went with the first option, and a few years back it was announced that these worms had not only returned back to life, but started to feed and multiply rapidly. The news then got shared recently on various websites, and due to everything that's happened it got people worried. The event was described by scientists as being truly revolutionary, and saying that they thought this would never happen. The team are now working on trying to understand how these worms were able to do what they did. One of the first websites to feature the news that the Russian scientists had thought roundworms was back in 2018, and although people have voiced their concerns, the scientists have said it's one of the greatest discoveries they've made. These roundworms have been under scientific supervision the whole time, with the team saying that the discovery is nothing short of a revolution in the field of cryobiosis. Cryobiosis happens when water around the creature becomes frozen, and in turn causes that animal to become frozen. Once temperatures return to normal the creature will continue to live on. What's interesting about this discovery is that scientists weren't even looking for roundworms at the time they were found. Things like bacteria and single-celled organisms have been known to survive much longer in similar conditions, but the team have said what's so special about this is that these roundworms are multicellular organisms, and no one thought these worms could have been resurrected after such a long time. One of the team members, Sachlovich, said the following, We hadn't obtained multicellular animals that had survived cryobiosis on a geological timescale before. It was just a happy coincidence that we got two live nematodes in two soil samples at once, but even their existing record for survival in suspended animation was only around 30 to 40 years. End quote. Even when the soil samples were sent off, the worms weren't initially seen. The scientists at the lab placed them on a petri dish and started to observe them for the next 72 hours. One of the researchers said the following. We spotted the worms only when they started moving. That was around 10 to 14 days after on freezing. They probably came to life even earlier. End quote. Non-believers soon started to put forward other theories like these were modern day worms, and not ancient worms as described. But these rumors were soon put to rest as these samples were taken from specific regions, and these were near rivers that were able to be dated back 42,000 years. Also, they were collected from the ground using a drill, with the scientists noting that the drill had been sterilized before use. The team said that the first sample that was brought up ended up being over 32,000 years old, with the second being even older, saying that after tests were conducted this one was 42,000 years old. Both of these roundworms were identified as female. Statlovich said the following about the creatures. A single-celled organism can survive due to its adaptive properties. For example, the ability to form various stages of dormancy, spores or cysts. But a multicellular organism has a more complex structure. Although nematodes are also known to have a dormant stage, during prolonged hibernation damage to DNA and cell membranes can occur and can accumulate in the cells. Toxins can be produced that should either destroy the organism will be repaired during the suspended animation or after defrosting. Somehow these worms managed to survive. It's a most curious enigma. End quote. When she was asked about the safety of these and whether we should be bringing ancient creatures back to life, she said the following. As a result of the ongoing thawing of the permafrost, organisms preserved in it find their way back into the modern ecosystem every year. It's a natural process. We simply follow nature and do nothing that doesn't happen in the natural environment. End quote. Some people voice their concern about this though, with one person saying the following. With everything that's recently happened, do we really need to be doing stuff like this? I understand it's impressive, but is this really the best time? End quote. While another person said this, we understand how cool and powerful Mother Nature is. We lived through it recently. We really don't need to be bringing things back to life that lived on this planet tens of thousands of years ago. 
end quote. Well, this person simply said, Do you want Jurassic Park? Because this is how you get Jurassic Park. I have a bad feeling about this. End quote. It seems that this isn't the only thing that Russian scientists are working on. A few years back, it was announced by a team of researchers in Russia along with South Korea that they've been working on bringing back prehistoric creatures. The scientists are currently carrying out research in a lab that costs $5.9 million. The scientists hope to study animals that were once extinct from the living cells, saying that they want to be able to move on to restore the creatures. Some of the animals they are studying include the cave lion, woolly mammoth, woolly rhino and species of horses that went extinct. Scientists from Harvard and Russia have already delved into mixing genes to bring back species that are extinct and they've said they want to put woolly mammoth genes into an Asian elephant, and they plan to do this by 2021. Some have suggested this could be the start of something huge, with people putting forward the idea that we will eventually have many extinct species roaming our planet once again. Despite the countless skeptics and claims against the alien awareness movement, a massive amount of witness accounts and substantial scientific evidence has come forward over the years surrounding the existence of extraterrestrial life and the proof surrounding their visitations of our planet. Terrell Copeland's story is one that's fascinated many. The former US Marine is from Virginia and details he's had several UFO encounters, going on to say that one of these crafts even abducted him. The US Marine story is often brought up because believers say it's hard to dismiss. In 2009, he and 1,500 people held a secret meeting in a small New England town. The meeting was attended by those who were interested to learn about UFOs and aliens. In the meeting, Copeland opened up and revealed that back in 2005, he witnessed a mysterious triangular craft in the sky saying that it was hovering above a shopping centre. It's important to note that the triangular shaped craft is somewhat of a mystery. There's some believers that think that this craft belongs to our military, while others say that due to how fast it can fly and due to how long it's been seen on our planet it doesn't belong to us. The second encounter happened two years later in 2007, in which he said he was able to capture this one from his apartment building. He said the following, It was an orb of light, just a big ball of light. It wasn't moving. One was solid white, the other was directly across the street, around 300 feet from the ground and was changing colours very rapidly. End quote. After this, he published the video online and was interested to see what people thought of it. Not long after posting the video, he reported that he had a knock at the door. When he opened it, he said there was a mysterious man standing there, and when he asked who he was, the man replied that he was a military contractor, and wanted to talk to him about his recent sighting. One of the questions the man asked was the following. Do you believe the US government is in contact with otherworldly beings? End quote. However, this was only the beginning, as after these encounters, he would go on to experience lost time, sleep paralysis, and even abductions. He details that back in 2006, he was abducted by a large craft, and when he came around, he could see there was a woman in front of him, who didn't quite look human, noting that she had human features, but that she also had large black eyes and an elongated skull. This experience didn't seem to affect him too much, and he even had an open mind about the whole encounter, saying the following, I just want to be a better person because if I feel someone from above took notice of me, then maybe I'm doing something right, and maybe if I'm doing something right, maybe I can do better. End quote. Some UFO believers took this further and suggested that he may be part alien, and that the woman he saw could have been related to him in some way. He responded with the following, That's heavy. It's not surprising to me though. After all that's happened these last couple of years, it could be true. 
End quote. Many are interested in the mysterious individual that knocked on his door, and go on to say it's likely he was visited by the mysterious men in black. Researchers have said it's more than obvious at this point that not only is there a secret agency working around the clock to suppress any information regarding extraterrestrial life, but this secret agency also works to intimidate, threaten, discredit or even attack people in the alien community who happen to stumble upon damning evidence or have spent their lives trying to expose the truth. This secret agency, be it an agency that works with the government or above them, has come to be known around the world as the hidden men in black that will stop at no means to prevent the truth from leaking out into the public mind. Many skeptics will claim that supposed figures are nothing more than the paranoid manifestations of theories who try to validate their work, but the people who are truly in the know are well aware of the vast amount of evidence of such encounters with the men in black. Alien abductions interest many of us. There's a handful of interesting cases that have come to light in recent years, and although scientists and researchers have tried to explain them away as things like sleep paralysis, others have said this phenomenon should be taken more seriously. Another interesting case is that of Judy Doherty. An often recurring theme of extraterrestrial abduction stories is that many alien abductees are unaware of being victims of an abduction until hypnosis allows them to unlock repressed memories, seemingly locked away from their conscious minds. This also appears to be the case with the witness account of Judy Doherty. According to Judy's case, back in 1973, four witnesses were traveling home to Texas City when they encountered a strange light that was described as hovering in the night sky. The four witnesses, Judy, her daughter Cindy, Judy's mother and Judy's sister-in-law, or got out of the car to get a better look at the craft. Suddenly, a period of time passed and the light moved away and disappeared into the distance. Following the event, Judy began complaining of severe migraine headaches, generalized anxiety and trouble sleeping following the encounter. After visiting a handful of doctors, all of whom believed that the symptoms were most likely physical manifestations of stress, Judy visited with Dr. Leo Sprinkle, a well-known ufologist and trained hypnotist to help alleviate her stress. Once under hypnosis, Julie began to uncover repressed memories of an alien abduction that took place during the sighting that the four witnesses made only several weeks prior. According to Judy and later corroborated by her daughter after ongoing hypnosis therapy, the four women were taken aboard the craft and witnessed two small alien entities cut apart a cow and watch them remove its organs. After this, the daughter was then placed on an operating table, as the aliens began taking a variety of samples from her. However, Judy nor the daughter go into details by what they mean by this. Once the hypnosis therapy was finished, Judy's symptoms cleared up almost immediately. In April of 1986, in the then Soviet-controlled Ukraine, a nuclear disaster demonstrated to the world the effects of nuclear power outside of military applications. The Chernobyl instance was the malfunction of a nuclear reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, known as Reactor No. 4, located 12 miles south of the border of Belarus and 81 miles north of the city of Kiev, Ukraine. The disaster caused 400 times more radioactive material released into the atmosphere compared to the radioactive material released by the bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. This led to the mass evacuation of the region as well as one of the most important responses by the world's governments in an attempt to help secure and contain the area from further radioactive bombardment. After the dust had settled, all that remained were the remnants of an era lost to time frozen in place. Even to this day there are restrictions on where you can visit, with most of the areas around Chernobyl being out of bounds. Incredibly, decades later, various stories have been told about mysterious creatures seen in and around the area. One of the most interesting stories is that of the Blackbird of Chernobyl. 
after the encounters witnessed in the town of Point Pleasant back in 1966 to 1967. The Mothman would not return for another couple of decades, in which reported sightings of the creature were seen throughout the Soviet Union, but concentrated around the town of Pripyat and at the Chernobyl power plant. There were an overwhelming number of reports in the region, and even witness accounts for those that worked at the power plants that appeared to be bothered by the appearance of the creature. According to the residents of the town of Pripyat, there were a number of reports and claims of a mysterious wind creature often seen flying over the town late at night, and this was on a variety of different occasions. However, in the case of the workers at the Chernobyl power plant, there appeared to be much more alarming reports that were provided. In the months shortly following the Chernobyl incident on the 26th of April back in 1986, the workers at the plant noticed the same creature reported throughout the town of Pripyat hovering above the plant, and sometimes even resting on the larger towers and areas of construction. What grew more perplexing for the workers were the reported instances of which people claimed to have experienced harrowing nightmares, and these always involved the creature, that would manifest into threatening phone calls of the creature calling them all throughout the night. Many residents of Pripyat and workers at the Chernobyl power plant often describe the creature as resembling the shape of a man, with wings and glowing red eyes. This creature would later be referred to as the Blackbird of Chernobyl, and similar to the cases of Point Pleasant would cease to exist in the region shortly after the Chernobyl incident. The Chernobyl incident is known worldwide as one of the largest tragedies, and potentially the most environmentally damaging of its time. Although it appeared that the governments of the world were ready and prepared when it occurred, the event still saw more than 50,000 square miles of land contaminated with radioactive fallout, and being made completely unusable for the foreseeable future. The site of the town of Pripyat and Chernobyl will not be habitable for another 20,000 years. It could very well be that the Mothman was warning us of an impending doom, that could have left a much larger amount of land completely uninhabitable for much longer. It's not just this creature that residents couldn't explain. In the wake of the events that unfolded, various residents and workers would go into detail that they saw mysterious unidentified flying objects, and these could be seen hovering above the power plant. Those who have looked into these cases have said that UFOs seem to have an interest in our missiles, and other highly sensitive areas not accessible by the general public. These unidentified crafts seem to be able to make their way into secure airspaces without being detected, and then suddenly disappear before military planes can get in and investigate. Mikhail Varasky, who was working for the Radiation Control Department, said that on the same day as the disaster, he and several other colleagues would witness a mysterious craft hovering above Reactor Number 4 almost as if inspecting it. His story isn't very well known, but he details his encounter with UFOs guessed from the future. He said the following, We saw a ball of fire, and it was slowly flying in the sky. I think the ball was six or eight meters in diameter. Then we saw two rays of crimson light stretching towards the fourth unit. The object was some 300 meters from the reactor. The event lasted for around three minutes. The lights of the object went out and it flew away in the northwestern direction. End quote. Incredibly, he goes on to detail that the radiation levels in the area dropped, going on to say the following. The UFO brought the radiation levels down. The level was decreased almost four times. This probably prevented a nuclear blast. End quote. This has caused UFO researchers to suggest that this craft was actually trying to help us. Various military personnel have come forward and said that when tests are being carried out, it's not uncommon to see UFOs in the region, going on to say that it's almost like they're watching what we're doing. Another thing that people have allegedly seen in and around reactor number 4 is that of shadow people. Shadow people are defined as supernatural shadow-like humanoid figures that, according to believers, are seen flickering on walls and ceilings in the viewer's peripheral vision. Shadow people are said to be entities of the underworld, 
but those who have experienced them have said they're not sure whether they're evil, helpful or just there. Scientists have tried to offer other explanations for the phenomena. For example, some researchers conclude that seeing shadow figures are simply symptoms of sleep paralysis or deprivation, and others have noted that those taking medicine are more likely to experience these sorts of hallucinations. Alternatively, they can simply be the mind playing tricks on somebody who has experienced a heightened sense of alert. For example, when you're walking down a dark alley at night. However, some people are convinced that shadow people are actually apparitions of those that have passed on. They think that the reason they're in shadow form is because we on earth can't clearly see them, and therefore find it hard to see these figures. Others have suggested that these entities are often seen in places that have seen hard times. The Chernobyl incident affected many people, and some researchers have said that some of these people may not have moved on from this area, and can still be seen wandering the region looking for answers. Bigfoot is one of the most interesting cryptids out there, perhaps because it's the one cryptid that most resembles us. For years now people have been coming forward with their encounters with these elusive creatures, being able to provide photographic evidence along with cast of footprints. However, it's also known for causing interesting discussions. Some think that the humanoid exists in small groups, while others have said it's not possible that such a large humanoid could exist in our world without being seen more frequently. They point to the fact there would need to be a large group of them to survive, and if this was the case they'd be seen a lot more often. Others however disagree with this notion, and have said that for thousands of years man has been encountering these giants, with reports coming from Tibet, America and even Australia. However, some people take it a step further, and claim that they've managed to interact with these creatures. One of these is a 70 year old woman, who's detailed that she's been communicating with and raising a Bigfoot for almost a decade. Her incredible story details that she's raised the baby Bigfoot since it was young, and that she's even managed to teach it a few words. The woman said she can back up her story with photographs and videos, but as of right now has decided not to release these. She first encountered the Bigfoot back in 1964 in a swamp in Louisiana, saying that the creature was weak and only weighed roughly 20 pounds. She then thought that if she didn't do anything the creature might pass away. Wanting to avoid this she took the baby Bigfoot home, and started to raise it. When she got home she fed the Bigfoot, saying that its favourite food was eggs, tomatoes and goat's milk. After a couple of meals and getting the creature back on its feet, she said she released it back into the wild where it belonged. However, every time she did this she said it refused to leave, and would always find its way back to her. Over the next eight years, she continued to raise and feed the animal, but said when it reached adulthood she moved away. In 1974 she moved into a nearby town, and said she had to leave the creatures behind, something she said wasn't easy. She said the following about the whole experience. He was so little and so cute. I had to do something about it. He was so defenceless, lying next to the mud and water curled up crying like a baby. His parents either passed away or had abandoned him. He brought a friend home with him. At first the other guy was shy hiding behind the bushes, but little by little he began to trust me. So there we were sitting on my porch, two Bigfoots and I having dinner under the moon. Bigfoots are real and they happen to be excellent creatures, docile and better than most people, and by the way they don't smell bad like some people say. I've given you a story, tell it. That's all I want. Only another person besides you knows my secret now, and that's my friend Maggie. It's an interesting story, but as with most of these, certain questions will be put forward. You have to provide evidence when it comes to these sorts of claims, as although they make for great stories, we need to see evidence to back up what's being said. 
However, even some people within the science community have come forward and said that we shouldn't dismiss these sightings. One question that's been put forward is does forensic science back up Bigfoot claims? Jeff Meldon, Professor of Autonomy and Anthropology at the Idaho State University, have said he thinks it does, and who better to believe than an expert in the evolutionary morphology, that is the study of how primates adapted to bipedalism. In his research, Meldrum studies footprints to determine how humans have evolved for upright walking. He studies samples from Africa, as well as other places all around the world. Meldrum attributes his interest in Bigfoot to a track he discovered in southeastern Washington. It was here he says he found a fresh track, so fresh he could see the skin ridges in detail. The print was at least 14 inches long. That first sighting was over 20 years ago. Since then, Meldrum has studied over 300 footprints, as well as hundreds of photos of Bigfoot. When describing these cars, Meldrum said the feet are broader and flatter than humans. He also noted the lack of an arch and thumb like a big toe that would be similar to an Ames. Instead, there was a big toe more like a human's. The toes were longer, presumably to help navigate the uneven terrain. Furthermore, based on the imprint, Meldrum believed the prints couldn't have been manufactured as some have said. The print is pressed into the ground in such a way that it shows flexibility. He noted that these prints are usually adapted to allow large primates to walk on two legs. To Meldrum, this evidence is proof that Bigfoot may exist, and it would be ridiculous to simply discount his evidence. Meldrum doesn't simply believe in Bigfoot, he is certain the creatures exist. Other researchers have pointed out that large humanoid creatures have been reported for at least the last 10,000 years, saying that ancient man has detailed their encounter with what they say are large humans. Going back, old tales in Australia said the Yowie were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent, but were completely driven out of their native lands by the men that came there to settle. However, every so often eyewitness accounts come from Australia, detailing that they've seen what looks like a Bigfoot creature. Going down the Yowie rabbit hole leads to further theories, from Australian government officials covering up further evidence, to Yowies being involved in many of the extraterrestrial and unidentified flying object sightings all around Australia. There's even subgroups of the Yowie community that defend the idea that Yowie might be an alien species, and that the Bigfoot monsters and variations could all be extraterrestrial species. The Yowie creature is commonly encountered in Queensland, with many of the eyewitnesses saying this creature is unlike anything they've seen before. The Lockheed Martin SR-72, also nicknamed the Son of Blackbird, is an American hypersonic aircraft currently under construction. It's the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, a plane that was able to reach speeds of 3,529 km per hour, or 2,200 miles per hour, and heights of 85,000 feet. The most recent news is that this craft will be around 60 feet in length. What's mind-blowing is when you consider that the hypersonic technology of Vehicle 2, which is an experimental glide aircraft, is capable of hitting Mach 17, which is 13,000 miles per hour, to put that into perspective, the Eurofighter Typhoon, one of the world's most impressive combat aircraft can do 2,495 km per hour, or 1,550 miles per hour. So knowing that they have this tank, the SR-72 is expected to reach speeds of over 14,500 miles per hour, 12,000 miles per hour faster than the Eurofighter Typhoon. Lockheed Martin's SR-72 could be ready within the next few years, with whispers of it being scheduled for first flight around 2023. However, there's some that have said that one's already been spotted by satellite. Google Earth images have started to be shared around again showing what appears to be a futuristic looking aircraft. Not much information could be gathered from the image alone, 
but that didn't stop users from sharing their theories. One of the first people to share the image was that of Secure Team 10, and since then it's been shared on various UFO grooms, where users have debated what this thing is. One person said the following, This object definitely looks futuristic. However, I doubt that a supersonic aircraft would be left out in the open. The image is genuine, but perhaps it's something else. End quote. While another person said this, To me it kind of looks like a speedboat. The shape and size of it gives off the illusion that it's actually an aircraft, when in my opinion it isn't. I think I remember someone saying that close by is a lake, so perhaps it's just someone's boat. End quote. Another person said the following, After looking at these photographs for hours, I've come to the conclusion that this is not the SR-72, or hypersonic aircraft at all. I saw someone else comment something similar, and I think that what we're looking at is a test piece they use for calibrating radars. If you go by Lockheed Martin's word, then this hypersonic plane hasn't been developed yet, and would they really leave this craft out in the open for everyone to see? It certainly wouldn't be parked up like this. End quote. Someone even suggested that this craft was between 4 and 10 metres in length, and could be an F-35RC model. Although this may be the case, these projects are a reality, with Lockheed Martin officials saying that they are working on advanced development aircraft programmes. The SR-72 aircraft will be the most impressive aircraft on the planet, having state-of-the-art hypersonic technology. Some websites are even reporting that the SR-72 will be able to strike targets anywhere in less than an hour. This 14,500 miles per hour aircraft will be an optionally piloted flight research vehicle, meaning that it will be able to fly without a pilot. Lockheed Martin Executive Vice President and Skunk Works General Manager, Rob Weiss said the following to Aviation Week, We've been saying that hypersonics are two years away for the last 20 years, but all I can say is that the technology is mature, and we, along with DARPA and the services, are working hard to get that capability into the hands of our warfighters, and we're looking to do this as soon as possible. End quote. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, said the following on their website. DARPA's Falcon Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, HTV2 program is a multi-year research and development effort to increase the technical knowledge base and advance critical technologies to make long-duration hypersonic flight a reality. Data from the program informs policy, acquisition and operation decisions for future Department or Defense conventional prompt global strike programs. Hypersonic data is collected through extensive modeling and simulation, wind tunnel testing and two experimental flight tests. The ultimate goal is a capability that can reach anywhere in the world in less than an hour. Falcon HTV-2 is an unmanned rocket launch maneuverable aircraft that glides through the Earth's atmosphere at incredibly fast speeds. Mach 20, which is approximately 13,000 miles per hour, at HTV2 speeds, flight time between New York City and Los Angeles would be less than 12 minutes. The HTV2 vehicle is a data truck, with numerous sensors that collect data in an uncertain operating envelope. End quote. Although this sounds impressive, we mentioned in a previous video that people have been seeing this cross for a while now, and it's caused eyewitnesses to say that this technology has been around for decades. One notable craft is that of the mysterious Black Triangle, a craft that's been seen displaying extremely fast speeds, much faster than those of jets. These Black Triangles are associated with unidentified crafts, and this is because of what they've been observed doing. The Black Triangles don't appear to make any sound, are able to hover motionless and close to the ground, are said to be much faster than any aircraft ever witnessed, and don't leave behind contrails. Pilots have even come forward with their encounters with these mysterious black triangles. 
One of the problems with this aircraft is that we know it exists. Every year thousands of people see this mysterious cross in the sky. First questions remain though. How are these crafts able to hover motionless in the sky without making a sound? How can they go from a standstill to thousands of miles per hour within a few seconds? And why does no one seem to know anything about them? Another mystery surrounding these crafts is that they're seemingly able to sneak into restricted airspace. It seems like every other day something strange is found in Antarctica. Those who have spent countless hours looking at the icy continent have said it's home to various anomalies. The most recent one found by amateur researchers is this one. However, the strange thing about this discovery is that it's massive. The anomaly shows what looks like a giant circle, and as always there hasn't been a shortage of theories that have been put forward to try and explain this thing. Those who look into these types of discoveries are of the idea that something is happening in Antarctica, and these types of discoveries only back up their ideas that officials are hiding something from us. Some have said that there's a high military presence in Antarctica, and have questioned why they're there. After all, we've been told our whole lives that nothing is going on down there, yet every other week strange discoveries are made. One person suggested that these circular features may not actually be there, and that it could have been placed on top of something in order to hide it. They said that similar things had been found on Google Earth before, and secret locations across our planets normally get blurred out. They noted though that normally the lines that blur out these things are rectangle in shape, so it's odd to see one that's circular. Whatever this thing is though, it's one of the biggest discoveries to have been made in Antarctica. It's so big that it's even visible from space. When measurements were done using Google Earth's measuring tool, it came in at 14,883 metres. That's 9.2 miles or 14.8 kilometres. As of right now, amateur researchers are saying this is the biggest discovery that's been made in Antarctica. When these types of finds get shared, the majority of people think that something is happening underneath the structure itself and these are placed here in order to stop the public from seeing. I showed a few people this image who look into these types of anomalies, and this was their response. This thing is huge. I know Google Earth does sometimes have glitches, but I don't think this is what we're looking at. My guess is that something is going on in this region of Antarctica, and they don't want people looking in on what they're doing. There's been cases where people have found strange things, then a few days later they disappear from Google Earth. We know they have the ability to place and hide things from the app, so I'm predicting that whatever this thing is, it will disappear within a few days. As of right now, we can only speculate as to what this thing is, and what's underneath it. End quote. Well, this person said the following. I don't really know what to make of this image. Normally when we find these anomalies, they are small and are very difficult to find. However, this one really stands out. You hardly have to zoom in to see it. I personally believe that governments have discovered UFOs and other ancient structures in Antarctica. So perhaps something new was found underneath this circular structure. End quote. Some researchers have said that various countries are aware of these objects, and that certain places on our planet are a hotspot for these crafts. UFO researchers have said that Antarctica is one place that's of particular interest, and it's one of the reasons why there's various government buildings scattered across the continent. Many stories have come from this region, detailing that not only are these objects particularly interested in Antarctica, but some have even been caught by satellites, proving to some that these unidentified flying objects have been visiting this area for years. This has caused various people to search through Google Earth in the hopes of finding something, and in some cases people are able to make some interesting finds. Fueling their beliefs are the alleged pyramids that can be found scattered across the icy continent. Not only does the size of these alleged mountains display the proportions of a perfect pyramid, 
but some have claimed they're even bigger than the pyramids found in Egypt. According to some, this could very well mean that the continent of Antarctica is home to one of the last surviving remnants of an ancient advanced civilization, vastly predating the existence of the human race. Although many would dispel the notion that intelligent life exists elsewhere in our galaxy, there are a number of theorist groups that not only believe that alien life is here, but that such extraterrestrials have already established vast research bases on our planet, for the sole purpose of studying the human race like a pack of lab mice. Officials deny this and have said these are mere baseless theories, but as fairly pointed out by amateur researchers, it's not like they've been honest and open with the general public, as history has shown us that they've carried out various experiments on the general public, and the majority of these were actually done without people's knowledge. Over the years, information on a few of these have been released through declassified networks, but as mentioned before, these are only the ones we know about, and for every one we're aware of, it's likely there's dozens we'll never know about. So when officials say these things aren't happening, are they really the most trustworthy? This is one of the reasons why amateur researchers have carried on with their research in these areas, and say that it's not hard to find evidence in this remote location. Although some theorists think they've struck gold and have possibly found evidence of something otherworldly, others have hit back these claims and suggest that what people are finding has nothing to do with UFOs. What these people suggest is that these are everyday objects, and likely come from their surroundings. For example, one of the most common things that gets put forward is that what people are seeing is shadows, or part of a mountain that is broken off. As of right now though, UFO researchers have said they will continue their research in the area, in the hopes of finding more anomalies, and say that although some of these discoveries have been explained as everyday things like snow and ice, there are some that definitely don't fit in that category. Scientists and researchers have worked incredibly hard to deploy various cameras in space. This was done with the sole purpose of being able to study the various solar bodies around us. One of particular interest is that of the sun. Something interesting was recently captured by one of these cameras known as LASCO, or the Large Angle Spectrometric Coronagraph. NASA said the following on their website. LASCO or Large Angle Spectrometric Coronagraph is able to take images of the solar corona by blocking the light coming directly from the sun with an occulted disk, creating an official eclipse within the instrument itself. The position of the solar disk is indicated in the images by the white circle. SOHO has two coronagraphs, referred to as C2 and C3. C2 images show the inner solar corona up to 5.25 million miles, or 8.4 million kilometers away from the sun. C3 images have a larger field of view, covering around 30 million miles, or 45 million kilometers away from the sun. Observations almost continuous, but their immediate availability on the website depends on having telemetry contact with the spacecraft. End quote. Those watching the cameras though noticed a huge explosion, which some say was so big that it almost took out the cameras. Others who saw it suggested it might have been a solar flare, but some think that something else might have been at play here, and they say this because shortly before the large eruption, a giant triangular shaped object can be seen. The object wasn't seen for long, but it's been suggested that this object may be behind what happened. Amateur researchers noted though that triangular objects are not often seen around the sun, saying that things like asteroids and space debris tend to be more circular in shape. Those who saw the event also noted that there's a big difference between this and a normal solar event. As of right now, there's not much information about what happened. No space agencies have come forward to detail the event. The thing that confuses those who saw the images though is the large triangular object that was seen just before the eruption happened, and this is because for years large triangular shaped objects have been seen around our sun. Those who've seen them have said they match the descriptions of the famous black triangle seen here on Earth. For those unaware, 
black triangle UFOs are a type of craft that have been seen in our sky for decades now. And after years of research, most agree that the most likely answer is that these crafts belong to the military. However, even though some believe that it's our military that owns these crafts, there's still many unanswered questions. For example, how they're able to travel at the speeds they do. How they're able to use a camouflage tank. How they can hover motionless in one area without making a sound. And how they're able to travel in space. It's these questions that have led some to say they think these crafts don't belong to us. After all, we currently don't have any aircraft that's able to match what these crafts do. These black triangles are hundreds of years more advanced than the current tech we have. Although some believers have suggested that these crafts are part of some top secret military program. As of right now, no military has come forward to claim it's them who's behind these sightings. However, sightings of these crafts close to our moon and sun would suggest that they're more advanced than we first thought. Something to note is that these triangle UFOs are not anything new. As some amateur researchers have been able to track down images of these crafts and date them to at least 1945. Scientists though have said what's likely been seen is natural space debris. And when it appears close to the camera it can take on the appearance of an aircraft. One UFO researcher said the following. One of the problems is the size of these objects. They are easily several miles in diameter, and that immediately throws people off. End quote. While another person said this. Why are so many of these black triangles seen around our sun? It seems strange that so many odd shaped UFOs are seen around our sun. It's as if there's something there that interests them. There's hundreds of images of these unidentified flying objects, and I find it hard to believe that every one of these is space debris. End quote. Scientists don't seem faced by these discoveries, and have said they will likely not comment on these types of anomalies anymore, saying that what people are seeing has always turned out to have quite an ordinary cause when examined by experienced SOHO scientists, further saying that we've never seen anything that even suggests that UFOs are out there. But amateur researchers are still of the opinion that there's something more mysterious going on. NASA has also said that we should be focusing on the things that could potentially wipe out our planet. Things like asteroids and solar storms. Solar storms in the Earth's upper atmosphere are triggered by a massive amount of energy from the sun. If one of these solar storms is particularly powerful, it will take out entire power networks across our planet. What's worrying about this is researchers have said we're not ready for an event like this, and that it would cause chaos across the entire planet. Experts estimate that if a large enough solar event was to strike our planet, it would cause over 2.3 trillion pounds or 3 trillion dollars worth in damage. Researchers have said the sun produced one of its most powerful flares back in 2017. This told them that the sun was waking up and becoming more active. When the sun throws out these flares, they can have effects on satellites and other pieces of equipment. Sunspots can be seen as darker areas that appear on the surface of the sun. Researchers and scientists said that back on the 29th of May, a solar flare came from one of these spots. Although this one wasn't massive, the team studying the spot said it still sent out harmful radiation into the atmosphere. The researchers labelled this one as an M-class which in terms of solar flares is in the middle when it comes to solar strength. The Soviet Union made it their goal to dominate space. This would lead to the Soviet officials making last minute decisions that would give them a head start in their space race. However, those who have researched the Soviet space program have said they haven't been entirely honest with us and that many cosmonauts would go on to lose their lives in the battle of the space race. The rivalry between the Soviet Union and the United States is well documented. Both wanted to have the bragging rights to see who was first in space. It's not just cosmonauts that shrouded in mystery. Since the space race, the Russians have sent various probes into space, and one of these was the Phobos-2 mission which was launched on the 12th of July 1988. The 
probe was created with the sole purpose of travelling to Mars's two moons Phobos. The probe made the 254.3 million kilometer, or 1.5 million mile journey to Mars. It arrived on the 30th of January 1989, but lost communication. Before it did, however, it sent back a few mysterious photographs, some of which are used by believers to suggest that the probe may have encountered something otherworldly. One of the photographs that was sent back showed a huge cigar or disc looking craft, some of which say that the probe may have encountered an unidentified flying object. As mentioned, the official NASA explanation was that the probe experienced a malfunction on board, but according to some higher officials, this isn't what actually happened, and this is where things get interesting. In 1991, Six former US Army remote viewers were brought in by Russian officials to help identify what actually went wrong with the probe. The thing is, this may sound like something that's made up, but it isn't. In fact, back in the early 1970s, it was said that the Soviet Union had begun spending millions each year on the study of psychic abilities and remote viewing, the ability to see locations far away via astral projection on a project known as Psychotronic Research. In fear that the Soviet Union had learned of a new form of spiritual technology, the United States quickly funded and established Project Stargate, of which had the express purpose to also study the remote viewing phenomenon, and use psychic soldiers as a method of retrieving information of captured prisoners of war, high-value targets and preventable attacks. Research into remote viewing would begin back in 1972, at the Stanford Research Institute located out of Mellon Park in the state of California. The lead researchers, Russell Targ and Harrod Puthoff, required a minimum accuracy of greater than 65% success before an individual could be accepted into the research study, which claims that many of the participants far exceeded this percentage, but were not always 100% accurate with their guesses. Shortly after the project began, the team was able to locate a lost Soviet spy plane in 1976 by psychic participant Rosemary Smith, as well as additional claims of recovered POVs and high-value targets over the years. Back in 1991, the remote viewers who had taken on to find the truth about what happened to the probe gave a report called Enigma Penetration. The report then went on to detail that the Soviet Phobos II spacecraft did in fact encounter a UFO, and that this craft had raised up from the Martian surface. The probe was able to quickly snap a photograph of the ominous looking craft, before everything was shut off. Those in the remote viewing program said the large craft had moved towards the probe as if inspecting it, but shortly after shot a particle beam device at the probe, which in turn caused it to malfunction. What's odd is that various remote viewers have come forward over the years and talked about similar instances, saying that anything we send into Earth is closely examined by non-human entities. The idea of there being alien life and UFOs out there has been the subject of much ridicule, but when you research the phenomenon you will find some high-ranking officials that have come forward and said we need to take sightings more seriously. In fact, one of these individuals was that of Lord Admiral Hill Norton, former Chief of Defence Staff, Five Star Admiral of the Royal Navy, and Chairman of the NATO Military Committee. He said the following, There is a serious possibility that we're being visited, and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations. This should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation, and not the subject of rubbishing by tabloid newspapers. End quote. He also went on to say the following about the famous Rendlesham Forest event, which has gone down in history as being the UK's most compelling UFO incident, that wasn't just witnessed by military personnel, but also had information go missing shortly before investigations started to take place. When asked his opinion on the matter, he said the following, There are only two conceivable explanations. Either a UFO landed there causing the damage, or the United States Air Force Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, and several hundred of his men were hallucinating. End quote. 
Another interesting project was that of the Gateway Experience. Declassified back in 2003, a government document between an independent researcher and the United States Army commander showed undeniable proof of a strange CIA experiment, known as the Gateway Process Experience, that was created to enhance the brain of an individual in the effort to give them mental superpowers that would help them achieve a higher mental capability than is capable for the average person. The document then ends with the researchers saying that the Gateway Process experience should be provided to all members of the organisation for heightened mental ability. Although the document fails to elaborate on the finding, the memo then states the training could open up members of the Gateway Process to be attacked by intelligent energy beings if the boundaries of time and space are continually surpassed. Stating in quotes, Subjects must be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporal energy forms when time and space boundaries are exceeded. With additional statements that perhaps practical use of the gateway process experience could be used to gather information from such entities and the universal consciousness. According to the National UFO Reporting Center, UFO sightings in and around Virginia are up. Over 190 reports were made in 2019, and last year that number is said to have been even higher. Reports range from the standard dish-shaped craft, to other shapes such as the Triangle and Pyramid. One interesting photograph that was recently sent to me was captured above Virginia in 2017. The person said the reason they sent it to me was because they've seen something similar in the sky above Virginia, and was wondering if anyone has seen anything similar. The object that was photographed has been described as a large cube, with others saying that it looks like it was taken near a tornado. This could be the case as Virginia is a place that suffers from tornadoes, with the worst times for them being between the months of April and September. Those who saw the images said these strange looking cubes are not anything new, with others saying they've seen similar things. Not much information can be gathered about the photograph, as when you track down the original poster of the image a man by the name of Mr Garcia, he didn't put a caption on the photo. UFO believers who saw it though noted that it looks similar to things that they've seen. The person who sent me the original photograph said the following, the reason I sent you this image is because it looks very similar to something I've seen. I live close to Woodbridge, and while driving home I've seen on a few occasions a strange looking object. The only way I can describe this object is that it looks like a large black cube, seems to have the ability to hover in the sky, and doesn't make a sound. I would guess that this thing is well over a hundred feet in the air, but every time I've tried to take a photograph the image just turns out blurry and you can't really make out what I'm seeing. I have an iPhone 11 but even that can't seem to pick it up. I've seen it twice now but can't work out what this could be. It doesn't resemble a plane, a helicopter, a blimp, a hot air balloon or something natural like an animal. It just sits there. Also, I know that this thing isn't a cloud because I can see other clouds hitting this object and then splitting off. So if this was a cloud, it would travel with the others. I've also seen other strange objects within my area. For example, another craft I saw had a ring of 10 lights around it. They would occasionally blink, but not enough for them to be something like a plane. I've talked with friends and neighbours in the region and they've said they've seen strange things as well. End quote. UFO researchers who study the phenomenon have said that various people have seen these strange cube-like objects, and go on to say that although they are rare they are sometimes seen, saying that they are different from the most commonly sighted crafts that are witnessed by people. The most commonly sighted UFOs are those of the Triangle, Cigar and Disc. Another resident who lives in Woodbridge also came forward to detail their sighting saying that they saw 14 to 24 lights that were flying in a strange formation. They said the following. They turned and headed north and back to the west and disappeared. They were all illuminated in a white colour, 
and made no sound at all. At the point they were turning back west I could see another craft with green blinking lights coming from the north, higher than the cross and down to where the cross started back to turn west. They all just disappeared. I retired from the army with 32 years active in reserve, and I've never seen a craft like this with no sound at all. End quote. MUFON or the Mutual UFO Network is a place where everyday people can go on and submit their report. It's a great place to find interesting UFO sightings as people can appear anonymous if they like. Another user detailed the mysterious encounter with a triangular shaped craft. While driving, me and my wife saw a large triangular shaped craft. This thing was admitting three bright lines, was hovering in the sky without making a sound, it appeared to be black in colour and was around 200 feet in length. I did some research when I got home in the hopes of trying to find out what we saw, but I couldn't match it to anything that came up online. This craft looked like a giant black triangle, and we have no idea what it was. End quote. These last few years have been a busy time for the UFO community. In fact, over 3,000 new UFO sightings of extraterrestrial and UFO activity have occurred, and as of right now, thousands of UFO sightings have been reported and catalogued by the MUFON organisation. This is an incredible leap in sightings compared to previous years, and has many members of these communities wondering if they could very well be the case that very soon. A dramatic change could come into play, and new breakthroughs in the discovery of extraterrestrial life could be made apparent to our world, in the hopes of preparing us for an eventual transparent contact between ourselves and extraterrestrial life. Others have said it's obvious that officials are being more open to the idea of UFOs, even going on to say that government officials are gearing up to reveal the truth to the general public. As of right now, various declassified documents have been released, some of which are of particular interest, showing us that officials have had their fair share of run-ins with these unidentified flying objects. Time will tell whether the general public are told the truth about these sightings, but as of right now we can only speculate about what's going on. Thousands of mysterious things are reported in our sky every year. The majority of these get explained as things like planes, military flares, wildlife, blimps, natural phenomena and camera anomalies. But every so often something interesting is photographed in our sky, leaving those who see it wondering what was captured. This happened recently in China when a strange object was filmed in the sky a few years back. Residents managed to snap photographs of the strange looking object while it was hovering above the Shandong province, a place that's known to be a hotspot for UFO sightings. In fact, residents in the area have said this isn't the first time that unexplained lights have been seen in the region, going on to say that every time this happens it doesn't get much coverage in China. Officials quickly came forward to debunk the sighting, and said that the most likely explanation was that this was a projection, but as locals said this doesn't explain away the other UFOs that were reported in the region. One resident said the following, this isn't the first time that me and my friends have seen odd lights. Whenever these strange lights are seen, people try their hardest to capture them on camera, because without this evidence no one will believe us. Another thing I've noticed is that the media will normally only feature sightings that can be easily explained. Many of the hard to explain UFO photographs don't reach the media. You can only normally find them on UFO groups. Me and my friends have seen large crafts hover in the sky that we estimate are a few hundred feet in length. Other times we've seen large orbs a few feet in diameter flying around the city. These are the ones that residents are talking about when we say we're seeing UFOs. It's hard to explain what they are because they're moving so fast. They are definitely not things like drones. They're too small and too fast. End quote. There's some who have said there's a theme with many of these sightings, with skeptics saying the majority of these images are blurry, and that you can't make out what the object is. One person said the following, I don't think these lights are anything, probably something like a drone or a Chinese lantern, 
end quote. Others though hit back at these explanations and say it's just a lazy reply, with them saying that if someone says it's a drone or a lantern it means they don't want to conduct any real research to explain what it is. When UFOs are reported in China however, it doesn't have as much of an impact. It's usually debunked straight away and people seem to forget about it. A large amount of these crafts have been photographed from this region, and it seems that it's only when they reach social media that they start to have an impact, with people then asking what they are and where they came from. This is what happened back in 2018, when many residents noticed what appeared to be strange glowing lights in the sky above Beijing. Multiple residents saw these crafts and started to snap photographs. One eyewitness described the lights as looking like a cone, and that every so often it would give off bright colours. Others said the lights would suddenly appear in the sky before mysteriously vanishing. Even though this strange event was witnessed by many people in the region, an explanation was not given for what was seen that night. One researcher, Yu Gun, reported that the object was high in the sky at the time it was seen, and that it definitely wasn't a satellite or any man-made object. It's important to note as well that there was no rocket launches in the area of the time of the reports, leaving some to suggest that the only explanation that can be given is that it was in fact a genuine unidentified flying object. As of today, Chinese state media has given no official explanations about the strange looking objects. It's also interesting to note that the area in which the object was seen is highly restricted airspace, so it's unlikely to have been a man-made craft. Others have suggested that the object in question could have been the military testing out some new tech, but as some have pointed out it's unlikely they would have done this over such a crowded place. Interestingly, similar looking objects have been seen in various countries across the world, causing some to put forward the idea that these objects don't belong to us. UFO researchers who live in China also say that a lot of what is seen is censored, and doesn't end up reaching the masses, saying that there's a lot of UFO sightings that the general public doesn't know about. Non-believers have said the cause of the lights could be down to atmospheric conditions, suggesting that it could be similar to ball lightning or earthquake lights. Another idea was that it could have been a resident using something like a drone. However, this doesn't explain how the lights vanished and then reappeared again. As of today, what was seen that night remains a mystery. Interestingly, residents in China have said it's not just UFOs that are seen in the sky, but every so often large structures appear to be floating motionless above them, causing some to say that they look like buildings and could be part of a secret government project. Once again, these claims are debunked by researchers and government officials, who say that the most likely answer for what people are seeing is that of Fata Morgana. It's a common atmospheric illusion that causes images far off in the distance to appear as if they're floating in the sky high above the horizon. The optical illusion occurs when layers of warm and cold air create an atmospheric duct that acts similar to that of a refracting lens, creating an almost mirrored image of the object past the horizon and making it appear as if it's floating amongst the clouds. Such illusions have allowed people to see images of cities far past the curve of the horizon, made it appear as if boats were sailing through the air, or as if cities themselves were built in the sky. Though this phenomenon has become somewhat of an explained natural illusion, such sightings never fail to baffle those witnessing it. A countless number of photographs have been taken over the years, Although the majority of these document things in our lives that we understand, some are unexplainable. One mysterious photograph is this one that allegedly shows a ghost. Security firm boss Adam Lee was notified that his motion sensor camera had picked up some movement out of construction sites in Birmingham. He said he logged onto his laptop to see what the camera had picked up, and to his surprise he saw a mysterious woman in white. A full patrol of the area was done in order to see if it was a break-in, but security guards reported that no one could be found in the area. There was no sign of any intruders. Mr. Lees, who is managing director of Limitless Security, said the following. 
I have no idea what it is, but it freaked me out for sure. We provide security for hundreds of building sites across the Midlands. If anything moves on our sites, a camera takes a picture. It works in infrared and alerts one of our guards. The security guards went out straight away. It was within minutes and there was no sign of anybody there, or of anybody ever being there. It was really bizarre. I have no idea what it could have been, but I didn't sleep for the rest of the night and it gave me the shivers, that's for sure. I've never believed in ghosts, but I can't explain this. People have been saying it's fake, but I can assure them that it's 100% genuine. End quote. Some people have said this image shows the famous white lady ghost, saying that this is one of the clearest images that's ever been taken of her. For those unaware, thousands of people have reported seeing strange sightings of a ghostly female figure, with long black hair wearing a long white gown, with many different origin stories of the spirit featuring tragic tales, but that all these spirits appear all across the world in many different countries, completely isolated from the myth all across history. This has led many to believe that a white lady ghost as the phenomenon has come to be called, can appear from almost anyone, and will usually take the form when a woman undergoes a tragic event, while remaining pure of heart. There have been a number of sightings of the White Lady Ghost across the Philippines. However, there's one story that stands out the most, as it has become the most commonly told story surrounding the legends of the ghost, and its behaviours in the country. According to urban legend, the spirit of the Lady in White belonged to a long-haired woman who was wearing a white dress on her way to her wedding. Suddenly, as she was driving, her car began shaking, and she crashed at high speed causing her to perish instantly. This has caused her spirit to be trapped in this area, in a constant state of attempting to get to her wedding in time. This has left many taxi drivers scared of driving through this region at night. In fact, it's been told amongst the drivers that they're not to pick up anyone alongside certain regions at night, as it's usually the lady in white who will enter the back seat of the taxi and take on a more disgusting form a form that's left many taxi drivers running from their car and abandoning their taxis entirely. Union Cemetery is another place where this mysterious entity has been seen. The graveyard has become infamous for sightings of a white lady spirit, which go back to at least the 1940s. The female ghost is said to have flowing black hair and be dressed in a long white gown or wedding dress. She walks the site of the cemetery at night sometimes appearing on nearby roads. Ed Warren claimed to have captured definitive evidence of the White Lady Ghost. Chillingly, several drivers have reported seeing the apparition suddenly appear in the middle of the road, only to vanish on impact with their vehicle. The identity of the mysterious White Lady figure is not known. The Warrens believe that she was a young woman who passed away at childbirth, However, theories abound as to who she was in her time on Earth. One tale holds that she was a woman who passed away after slaying her husband. Another theory is that she was a young woman who lost her life at the turn of the 20th century, whose body was later disposed of in a nearby sinkhole. Another mysterious photograph is this one that someone sent me a few years back. The person said that their nun captured a strange craft in the sky and said that after reviewing the photographs it looked like a black triangle. This one is of particular interest because rarely do you see a black triangle in the daytime. Usually these crafts are seen during the night, standing up because of the three lights they give off. Black triangle UFOs are a type of craft that have been seen in our sky for years now, and although we have various videos and photographs of them, there's still many unanswered questions. The man who sent the photograph was Aaron, and he said the following. My nan sent me these photographs while I was away. She lives in Portsmouth, which is located in the south of England. She told me the photos were taken a few seconds apart, but she couldn't understand what she had captured. After reviewing the photos, I couldn't work out what the object was. I asked her if she saw or heard anything, and she said no. 
After doing some research, I found out that triangular cross were a common occurrence in the south of England. This is the only thing I could think it was, as I've never seen any military cross that looked like this. End quote. The message ended with him saying that he doesn't want any attention, but just wants to know what is Nan captured. It's still one of the best and clearest images we have of one of these elusive black triangles. Though triangle UFO sightings are common, those who witness the cross often report them as having similar features. Triangular UFOs are often said to be completely silent, making no noise whatsoever as they hover above, leaving behind no signs of contrails. The cross are also usually reported as being around the size of a football field, and dark in colour. UFOs are largely referred to and depicted as flying saucers, but given the wide variety of reports over the years, triangular shaped cross seem to be one of the more common shapes that are witnessed. David Marlow, UFO researcher and author of Triangular UFOs, claims to have researched over 17,000 UFO sightings that involve triangular shaped graphs, often referred to as black triangles. While these types of UFOs are often associated with otherworldly visitors, there are some that speculate their earthly origins. Secret government projects have been going on for years, and while we don't know the extent or scale of these projects, it's entirely possible that these are human in origin, and are used as surveillance technology or as an experimental aircraft. Another strange photograph that got people talking was one that was captured on the surface of Mars. The photograph was taken by a camera on the Curiosity rover, where scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California began to investigate the mysterious light. According to NASA, the bright light appears in only one of the images, and not any of the others. Justin Mackey, a NASA imaging scientist, said the following about the image. One possibility is that the light is the glint from a rock surface reflecting the sun. When these images were taken each day, the sun was in the same direction as the bright spot, west-northwest from the rover, and relatively low in the sky. We think it's either a vent hole or a glinty rock. End quote. Not everyone brought this idea though, saying that this is just a theory and as of right now it hasn't been confirmed. There's some who have said the image could be proof of alien life on the planet, and even that of an unidentified flying object. Scientists though countered these arguments and said it's probably not the best idea to suggest it's alien life. Going on to say that another idea is that it could be a subatomic particle that smashed into the camera, leaving behind its trail of energy. Although various theories have been put forward to try and explain what the mysterious light is, as of right now it remains a mystery. Space is truly the final frontier when it comes to new discoveries. Every year, month and even every day scientists are working hard to try and crack the code of our universe. This results in tons of amazing discoveries being made all the time. Our planet is the only astronomical object that is known to harbour life. Nonetheless, there are some interesting facts and discoveries that have been made about outer space and our solar system. It just so happens that Earth is not the only interesting planet in our solar system. Saturn is regarded by astronomers as a gas giant, with an average radius approximately 9 times larger than Earth's. Although Saturn has only one eighth of the average density of the Earth, it possesses much more volumes, which makes it more than 95 times more massive. Saturn is unique among the planets. It's a massive ball made mostly of hydrogen and helium, and is adorned with thousands of beautiful ringlets. In recent years, NASA's Cassini spacecraft has sent back some fascinating images of Saturn, some of which have caused confusion. One of these images was captured back in 2016, when the spacecraft detected something large crashing through Saturn's F ring. Those monitoring the spacecraft then gave the objects the name of F16QA and F16QB. It suggested that these objects are likely ring particles. 
similar collisions have been detected in 2006 and 2007. Interestingly, not all NASA workers agree on these objects around Saturn. In fact, one former employee made a bold statement saying that NASA have got proof of large unidentified crafts that have been observed close to Saturn's rings, and that they'd seen these photographs. The employee goes on to detail that unidentified flying objects have taken an interest in Saturn's rings, and on numerous occasions we've captured them lurking close to the planet. Dr. Norman Bergeron, who's said to have been employed at NASA's research centre, detailed that these crafts that have been captured are not hard to spot, mainly because they're massive, easily being several miles in length, and matching descriptions of unidentified crafts that have been observed by people on Earth. However, one difference between the two is that although they are the same shape, the alleged crafts seen close to Saturn are much bigger. He said the following about the mysterious objects, Alien spacecraft are proliferating in our solar system and around these ring planets. End quote. One of the ways he was able to find out about these crafts was because he had access to raw images. These are images that are sent back to NASA that haven't yet been edited or tampered with, something that is commonly done by the space agency and that they're open about. They claim that various images we see have been edited or are part of various images that have been put together, commonly known as composite images. These raw images, however, gave him an insight into what the public weren't able to see, and in various photographs he could see giant cross sitting close to Saturn and his rings. Knowing that these objects were being kept a secret, he decided that the general public should know about them, and so went about releasing a book. However, he soon realised that he wasn't able to get it published in the United States. This caused him to travel to Scotland in the hopes of getting it published there. He did and the book was titled Ringmakers of Saturn. Many interesting photographs have been presented to back up his claims, but one of the most interesting ones shows what appears to be a giant cylinder shaped craft. He calls them electromagnetic vehicles. It was estimated that this giant object measured over 2,000 miles. Dr. Bergeron said the following about the mysterious objects. I don't know who built them, but what I found out is that these things inhabit Saturn. That's where I first discovered them, and they are proliferating. They are now in Uranus and Jupiter, wherever you see some rings now. I call it the Ringmaker. I could be looking down on the rings. I could see parallel lines crossing all of the rings at once. That's about as long as you can go. I could tell that those lines marked the outside of an object. I say this is an electromagnetic vehicle, because I can identify streamlined patterns, that I knew were what we called potential lines, and that says it was electrical. End quote. He claims that these crafts are building the rings on these planets, with theorists saying that these crafts can be found close to many of the celestial bodies in our solar system, including the Moon, Mars and the Sun. It appears though that amateur researchers can't seem to agree on what these crafts are. Some believe that they're monitoring the solar system, while others believe that they're actually other life forms that we share our solar system with. One of the issues though is the size of these crafts. The majority of them are hundreds if not thousands of miles in length. So what are these things, and if they are genuine who's building them? One amateur researcher said the following, These giant crafts need to be investigated as they have been witnessed for years. I think that at this point we have enough proof to make a case that they're real. One of the problems we have is that when we look at them we apply human ideas thinking that we couldn't build a craft of this size so it can't be done, but this is the wrong way of looking at things, and will actually set us back if we keep doing this. Just because humans couldn't do it, it doesn't mean it can't be done. After all, we're talking about the universe here. Human laws don't apply. I think more research needs to be done surrounding this topic, and the quicker we take it seriously, the quicker we'll get answers. End quote. 
Scientists and researchers though are not impressed with these kinds of images, with them saying that the most likely explanation is that these objects are just space debris, or anomalies picked up on camera equipment. When talking about unidentified flying objects in space, one researcher went on to say the following. Most commonly UFO claims are due to perfectly natural flaws or artifacts in our publicly available data. Some of the things that people are seeing are planets, cosmic rays, software glitches and debris. End quote. NASA's largest, most advanced rover has just touched down on Mars. This was after a 203 day journey. NASA said that after the 293 million miles or 472 million kilometer journey, the rover made it to the planet on Thursday. The rover, which has been called the Perseverance, was sent in order to collect Mars samples and then return them to Earth. NASA said the following on their website. Members of NASA's Perseverance Mars rover team watched in mission control as the first images arrived moments after the spacecraft successfully touched down on Mars, Thursday, February 18th, 2021, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. A key objective for Perseverance mission on Mars is astrobiology, including the search for signs of ancient microbial life. The rover will characterize the planet's geology and past climate, pave the way for human exploration on the red planet, and be the first mission to collect Martian rocks. End quote. Administrator Steve Jersick said the following. This landing is one of those pivotal moments for NASA, the United States and space exploration globally. When we know we're on the cusp of discovery and sharpening our pencils, so to speak, to rewrite the textbooks. The Mars 2020 Perseverance mission embodies our nation's spirit of persevering even in the most challenging of situations, inspiring and advancing science and exploration. The mission itself personifies the human idea of persevering towards the future, and will help us to prepare for human exploration on the Red Planet. End quote. NASA continued with the following. About the size of a car, the 2,263 pound, or 1,026 kilometer robotic geologist and astrobiologist will undergo several weeks of testing before it begins its two year science investigation of Mars's Jezero's crater. While the rover will investigate the rock and sediment of Jezero's ancient lake bend and river delta to characterize the region's geology and past climate, a fundamental part of its mission is astrobiology, including the search for signs of ancient microbial life. To that end, the Mars Sample Return Campaign, being planned by NASA and the European Space Agency, will allow scientists on Earth to study samples collected by Perseverance, to search for definitive signs of past life, using instruments too large and complex to send to the Red Planet. End quote. It wasn't long though before eagle-eyed viewers noticed some strange anomalies in the images that got sent back to Earth. Various UFO groups claimed that black objects could be seen above the rover, although some suggested that the objects seen could be debris. Others went down the route of suggesting that it's actually an unidentified flying object, and said that the rovers on Mars have a history of capturing these objects. One person said the following, You can see black orbs hovering above the Mars rover. Although it's not common to see objects above the rovers, UFO researchers have managed to find some interesting examples of what look like unidentified flying objects above Mars. End quote. As of right now, these types of discoveries divide people. There's those that think these are just pieces of debris, while others stand by the fact that these are actually crafts, saying that amateur researchers have managed to find mysterious objects in old Mars photographs. As mentioned, this isn't the first time that one of these rovers have sent back interesting images. One of the most recent ones is this one that can be seen close to the rover, and those who noticed the object said it looked like a UFO. Now before we carry on, NASA and other officials have said that UFOs aren't real, and that they can be explained using everyday things, 
like smudges on camera, space debris and pareidolia. But that hasn't stopped amateur researchers from looking through old images in the hopes of finding something strange. Those who have seen this object have said it resembles a disc, one of the most commonly reported UFOs. Others said it looks like this slender shaped UFO that's been witnessed by people for decades. The strange object can be seen off into the distance hovering above a nearby mound, and some UFO researchers who saw this image said it's actually a pretty clear photograph. Most of the UFOs that are seen above Mars are either off into the distance, or hard to make out, but this one can easily be seen. Mars has been the subject of much discussion over the years. For a long time researchers have said that water isn't present on the red planet. The more we've studied Mars, the more we've learned about its various changes over the years. For example, many eons ago scientists said that Mars would have been uninhabitable, but research has shown us that at one point in time Mars would have had conditions suitable for life. This is evident in water flow that can be seen on the surface of the red planet. One of the more interesting reports that come from this planet though is that of living entities. There are people out there that believe there's living creatures and bizarre objects on Mars' surface, with amateur researchers saying that what people are seeing isn't pareidolia, but rather actual animals. NASA has said these claims are completely false, and that they've never found life on Mars, going on to say that people who think they've found evidence of life are just misidentifying rocks. Perhaps one of the most well-known photographs allegedly showing a live animal is that of the Mars rat. The photograph depicting an alleged rodent was named the Mars rat, and the internet went wild with theories as to why the creature was there in the first place. It was first picked up on by UFO researchers a few years back, and they suggested the animal was placed on the Martian surface in order to see the effects the planet would have on a live animal. However, Joy Crisp, who was the Curiosity's Deputy Project Scientist of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said the following at the time. Clearly, it results from a lot of things like wind erosion, a mechanical abrasion and breakdown chemical weathering of the rocks, and this is why you get these weird shames. End quote. On the 9th of March 2021, a mysterious object was seen close to our sun. The photograph was captured by the SOHO spacecraft. As mentioned on NASA's website, the joint NASA ESA Solon Heliospheric Observatory mission, SOHO was designed to study the sun inside and out, from its internal structure to the extensive outer atmosphere, to the solar wind that blows across the solar system. Launched in December 1995, Solo was meant to operate until 1998, but it has been so successful that ESA and NASA have endorsed several mission extensions, and this is over the past two decades, allowing it to cover multiple solar cycles, 11 year periods of solar activity. End quote. NASA scientists have said that over the last two decades in space, SOHO has made some interesting new discoveries. However, it's not just scientists and researchers who have been looking through SOHO's data. Due to various anomalies, amateur researchers have used it as a tool to look through recent images, and there's some that think something is going on close to our sun. Various researchers have started to post this recent image online asking what it is. What's strange is that those who spend countless hours watching the sun have said this giant cube can be seen close to the sun every couple of weeks or so. This has only caused people to speculate about what this mysterious object could be, and investigate old images for themselves. Some have said that sometimes this giant cube can be seen inside the sun, while other photographs show it hovering beside it. Several UFO researchers have taken time to investigate what this thing is, and they've come to the conclusion that this large cube could possibly be a ship. So what is it that people are seeing? As of right now, UFO researchers have said they think these crafts are not from this world, and could even be monitoring our planet and watching human civilization. 
Interestingly, those who have studied these anomalies have said there's two different types. You have this type that looks kind of transparent and cloaked, then the other version that looks like a giant black cube. UFO researchers have said the large transparent cube has a kind of cloak on it, and this means it's harder to spot. Whereas the black cubes aren't actually a cube, but were actually placed there in order to hide something behind it. Those who've used measuring tools have suggested these giant cubes are hundreds of miles in length. Sky watchers go on to say it's not just the sun where these giant objects are seen, but they also appear close to our moon as well. As mentioned, amateur researchers who have measured it have said it's massive, and some of them are even bigger than our planet. One website that looks into these accounts is that of ET Database, and they've suggested that in the past these giant crafts have been over 25 times the size of planet Earth. ET Database has even said that the large flares that can be seen were caused by a giant UFO exiting the sun. Other UFO researchers have pointed out that it's one of the best places to see unidentified flying objects. Interestingly, they say that different shaped crafts can be seen leaving our sun, and that some of them even stick around for several hours before making a quick getaway. But what do scientists make of these anomalies? Firstly, they've said that what people are seeing is definitely not an alien ship, and that sometimes space debris can take on different shapes that makes it look like something is not. NASA and other space agencies have said they've presented evidence to back this up, and notes that although they look impressive, when NASA scientists have looked into them they always turn out to have a mundane explanation. UFO believers don't buy into it though, and have theorised that these giant cubes have been visiting our sun for many years now. This in turn has caused various theories to be put forward for why they come here, with some believers saying they think they might be using it as some type of portal, or that the sun could be a type of fueling station. Further saying that if these objects weren't real, how come when they're close they seem to have an effect on it? Saying that in some cases you can see the sun mould around these objects. Due to these sorts of claims, NASA decided to provide an official explanation on their SOHO page. They said the following. Ever since launch there's been a number of people who've claimed to have seen flying saucers and other objects in SOHO images. Although some of the supposed pictures of UFOs can seem quite intriguing, they've always turned out to have quite an ordinary course when examined by experienced SOHO scientists. Recently, we've been receiving so many questions and claims that we'd like to set the record straight. We've never seen anything that even suggests that UFOs are out there. Most commonly, UFO claims are due to perfectly natural flaws or artifacts in our publicly available data. Some of the things that people are seeing are planets, cosmic rays, software glitches and debris. End quote. According to former NASA engineer James Oberg, he went on to say that these objects are just space dandruff floating in front of cameras. When they appear in front of cameras they give off the effect that something much larger is there, when in reality what people are seeing has a natural origin. He said the following about the discoveries. I've had enough experience with real spaceflight to realise that what's been seen in many videos is nothing beyond the norm, from fully mundane phenomena occurring in unearthly settings. End quote. A retired Air Force colonel has said that he has new evidence that he thinks the public deserves to know about. He said that him and many others have evidence that something visited us during 1980. The sighting of an unusual craft was detected above Bentwaters Royal Air Force Base in the UK. Colonel Charles Holt knew what he saw, and so started the process of collecting sworn statements from those who were in and around the base at the time, which included air traffic controllers, tower watchmen and others. Everyone he spoke to told him they'd tracked and watched an unidentified flying object that made its way into the area noting that it was performing incredible aerial manoeuvres but didn't want to come forward with their statement due to fear, and so held on to it until the day they retired. On December 27th back in 1980, mysterious lights were seen by military personnel in the Rendlesham Forest. 
Various RAF personnel said they saw fast lights flying through the forest and above the base, with other members saying that when they went to investigate what was going on, they saw a triangular craft land within a clearing. This wouldn't be the end of the sighting, however, as on the second night the mysterious lights would return, which caused Deputy Base Commander Holt to lead a group into the forest. While there, he and others would see the mysterious craft for themselves. This then led to Holt going around and investigating what had happened, talking to other personnel to try and find out what they had witnessed. He made a tape recording during the event, but also filed a report where he described that a laser beam was coming from the craft. He said the following in the report. Early in the morning of 27th of December 80, approximately 0300 hours, two unidentified states Air Force security police patrolmen saw unusual lights outside the back gate at RAF Woodbridge. Thinking an aircraft might have crashed or been forced down, they called for permission to go outside the gate to investigate. The on-duty flight chief responded and allowed three patrolmen to proceed on foot. The individuals reported seeing a strange glowing object in the forest. The object was described as being metallic in appearance and triangular in shape, approximately 2 to 3 meters across the base, and approximately 2 meters high. It illuminated the entire forest with a white light. The object itself was hovering or on legs. As the patrolman approached the object, it maneuvered through the trees and disappeared. At this time, the animals on a nearby farm went into a frenzy. The object was briefly sighted approximately four hours near the back gate. The next day, three depressions one and a half inches deep and seven inches in diameter were found where the object had been sighted on the ground. The following night, 27th of December 80, the area was checked for radiation. Beta gamma readings of 0.1 millirangans were recorded with peak readings in the three depressions near the center of the triangle formed by the depressions. A nearby tree had moderate 0.5 to 0.7 readings on the side of the tree towards the depressions. Later in the night, a red sunlight light was seen through the trees. It moved around and pulsed. At one point, it appeared to throw off glowing particles, and then broke into five separate white objects and then disappeared. Immediately thereafter, Three star-like objects were noticed in the sky, two objects to the north and one to the south, all of which were above 100 degrees off the horizon. The object moved rapidly in sharp angular movements and displayed red, green and blue lines. The object to the north appeared to be elliptical through an 8 to 12 power lens. They then turned to full circles. The objects to the north remained in the sky for an hour or more. The object to the south was visible for two or three hours and beamed down a stream of light from time to time. Numerous individuals, including the undersigned, witnessed the activities in paragraphs two and three. Sign Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, United States Air Force Deputy Base Commander. Lieutenant Colonel Holt also went on to talk with the Huffington Post and detailed that what he and others saw was definitely under intelligent control going on to say the following. The military has nothing to do with it, other than the cover-up, but I can tell you there is some type of superintelligence that can change size, change shape and do funny things. What I saw I'm firmly convinced didn't have anything we know or could relate to inside it. Maybe they're not a being as we know. Maybe they're an entity that just has intelligence, and we just can't relate to it. End quote. Holt went on to say that he gathered sworn statements by those who'd witnessed the event, going on to say the following. They saw the object go across their scope, a 60-mile scope in two or three seconds, thousands of miles per hour. It came back across their scope again, stopped near the water tower. They observed it. They watched it go over the forest where we were. End quote. He went on to detail that the government covers up these types of stories and says that there's a top secret agency that controls everything to do with this subject, including extraterrestrial visits to Earth, saying the following. 
there is a contract civilian agency that's fed information, that is controlling everything. It's made up of either former military, high level government agencies or high ranking very knowledgeable scientists. I can almost guarantee you, that's the way we do it, and disinformation is the biggest thing. End quote. Holt is very disappointed and frustrated with how the Bentwaters incident has played out, saying that various people have been told to keep quiet, and that numerous files have gone missing over the years. In 2011, the UK released thousands of classified UFO documents to the public, but the ones that detailed the Rendlesham Forest incident were missing from that list. Holt said the following about this, It doesn't surprise me at all because they were probably taken from them by somebody, or sent somewhere by direction. Trust me, that's how it works. It's very disappointing on one hand, and it's also frightening. Who knows what else is going on? End quote. Jesus is arguably one of the most recognised figures of all time. Many have said that Jesus is one of the most interesting yet mysterious people to thwart our planet, yet various people have detailed encountering him, going on to say that he's appeared to them in times of need. Not everyone who encountered him though was expecting to. Miss Galvez was hiking up Hancock Hill when they encountered something strange on the way down. She said the following, We hiked Hancock Hill today and on our way down, I turned around and saw what looked like a white figure on the next hill. Anyone know what I'm looking at? End quote. The comment section was filled with people saying that she had actually encountered Jesus, and that she's not the only one who's seen the mysterious apparition in the area, with others going on to share their encounters with the figure. One woman said the following, I can't believe that I found this image. It was only a few weeks back when me and my husband were hiking the same trail, and encountered something similar. We are currently going through a rough patch and I've been doing a lot of praying. When I saw the figure, it almost brought me to tears. The encounter instantly made me feel better. End quote. With another person saying the following. This is definitely Christ. Since I was young, I've had many visions where he's come to me and helped me in times of need. This was a special encounter. End quote with this user saying the following, I once saw a mysterious figure while hiking here, but I never thought that it could have been Jesus. It was white in colour and seemed to be giving off beams of light. Another idea that someone else had who I told the encounter to was that it could have been the Martha Lines. Strange lights had been seen hovering and moving around this region for at least 100 years, so it could have been that. With that being said though, I don't think anyone has reported that they've been in the shape of a human. End quote. Not everyone was convinced by these theories though, with one person saying that there is actually a cutout of Jesus on the trail, and that sometimes people prop it up in order to fool hikers that don't know the area very well. Although this could explain some of the sightings, it doesn't explain the events where people have said they've seen the figure moving around on the mountain only for it to vanish when they try to get closer. In recent years, many people have come forward and said they've had a divine encounter. Whether this was an interaction with a loved one or even Jesus himself, many people believe it can happen. Those who've made these claims have said it's changed the world for the better. Science tells us that these visions are usually caused by dreams. The brain is very complex and we still can't answer how exactly it works, but visions of gods are believed to be just thoughts. Padre Pio has caused a lot of controversy among believers of the Catholic faith. He's come forward in recent years and said that Christ has made contact with him, and not only that but said that bad things are going to happen. He claimed that he spoke directly to Jesus who told them that the end of the world was near and that it would be brought about by natural disasters and spurred by God's desperation at humanity's destruction of the planet. Padre Pio claimed that Jesus told him that humanity has abandoned the right path, 
and taken those which could only reach a destination of violence and catastrophe. He said the following, When the world was entrusted to man, it was a garden. Man has turned it into an atmosphere full of poisons. Nothing now serves to purify the house of a man. A deep work is necessary, which can only come from heaven. Many who have read into this have said it seems to be taking a dig at how the modern world has panned out, suggesting that humans have damaged our planet and that things need to be done to correct this. Jesus allegedly told him that he is no longer able to extend divine advice to the people of the world, and instead they must face whatever comes next. The priest claimed that Jesus said the following, Prepare to live three days in total darkness. These three days are very close, and in these three days they will remain dead without eating or drinking. Then the light will return, but many will be the men who will not see it anymore. Many people will escape scared. It will run without a goal. They will say that there is salvation to the east and people will run to the east, but it will fall on a cliff. They will say that to the west there is salvation and people will run to the west but they will fall into a furnace. The earth will tremble and the panic will be great. The earth is sick. The earthquake will be like a snake. They will feel it crawling everywhere and many stones will fall, and many men will perish. You are like ants because the time will come when men will take their eyes off for a crumb of bread. Businesses will be looted. Warehouses will be taken and assaulted and destroyed. Paul will be the one who in those dark days will be without a candle, without a jug of water and without necessary for three months. End quote. However, others disagree with this, with one person saying the following. This is typical religious fear-mongering. If you don't do this, then this will happen. It's blackmail at a global scale. I have no problem with people believing in religion, but when you say that bad things will happen if you don't believe in it, I'll get annoyed. End quote. Although these types of statements cause some to disagree, there are others that believe this does happen. Another person had this to say. I believe that Christ does show himself to some people. He does this mostly to offer advice and wisdom. When I'm feeling down, I can feel his presence strongly, and this makes me feel much better. It's great knowing that there is someone there for you. End quote. In recent years, there's been various individuals who have said they've time travelled. Time travel has been an obsession for many. Everyone from scientists to filmmakers have wondered if it was possible, and what it would look like if it really happened. Even the physicist Stephen Hawking argued that time travel was something we couldn't rule out. Although no concrete evidence has been found to prove that time travel is possible, many experts are still optimistic, and will likely remain this way until proven otherwise. A handful of people have come forward in recent times with their stories of travelling in time, and one of these was detailed by a man from Siberia who claimed he travelled to the year 4040. The unnamed man said he worked in a physics lab, where he was part of a team who worked to build a time machine. He said that the team was successful in building the time machine, but said he has to be careful not to reveal too many details. He said that once the project was complete, he was one of the first people to test it. He said he was able to travel to the year 4040, and that it had been pretty much taken over by robots. He detailed that much of the human population had been wiped out by the machines, and that the majority of this was done in 2458. This was when humans had made contact with an advanced civilization after they got a response to one of their signals. The scientists went on to say these aliens easily outlived humans, being able to live to around 450 years on average. However, he said that these beings detailed that their species had just been involved in a massive war, one that wiped out the majority of their kind. Due to this, they searched the stars in order to find a place to colonize. The physicists said they tracked a signal that was sent out by Earth, 
and so made their way towards the planet. The scientists said that after these aliens arrived, everything rapidly improved for humans. Healthcare improved, meaning humans were overall more healthy and were able to live longer, and everyday life was easier on the human soul. But in 3213, humans and the aliens decided to collaborate and create a kind of super intelligence. He said that they created a huge computer that was around half the size of Europe. This computer was responsible for controlling every one of these robots. The scientists said though this computer outsmarted both humans and aliens, and when they were least expecting it turned on both their creators, telling the robots that the humans and the aliens were the enemy and that they needed to be destroyed. His story ends by saying that by the year 4040, pretty much everything on Earth was in ruins. Much of the population had been taken up by these super intelligent robots, and that it looked like nothing would return back to normal. The scientist said that he and his team then locked away the device that allowed them to travel to this time, and said that people need to take artificial intelligence more seriously. Noted that we've created our own downfall and it's only a matter of time before they strike. These kinds of stories make for interesting reads, but as scientists and researchers have pointed out, there's no proof that they actually happened. They've never been contacted by Russian officials saying that they've created a time machine, nor has evidence been presented to back up what they're saying. This leads many to believe that they're just stories. Regardless, there's still some that believe they're real and that we should listen instead of just writing them off. Interestingly, in some cases, we have been able to put a face to those who've claimed time travel is real, and one of these individuals who's been vocal about time travel is that of Ron Mallet. An astrophysicist named Ron Mallet has dedicated a large portion of his life to studying the possibility of time travel. His interest in time travel began when he was 10 years old, and his father passed away after suffering from a heart attack. A year after his father's death, Mallet discovered the book The Time Traveller by H.G. Wells, and his life was changed forever. After becoming a professor at the University of Connecticut, Mallet began sharing his ideas of time travel, and realised that many people were just as curious about the idea. This motivated him to continue his research, Mallet has determined several scientific equations and principles, and he now believes that not only is it possible to travel back in time, but he could even build a time machine to make it happen. According to a theory by Albert Einstein, objects that are large can bend space and time, and time goes slower as gravity gets stronger. Based on this theory, Mallet believes that you can do more than just bend space, but that you can twist it, he believes that anything that can be done to space can be done to time as well. Mallet has come up with a theory, claiming that time can be twisted into a loop that would make time travel possible. He built his own prototype that shows how one could use lasers to achieve success. Mallet has said that studying ring lasers and their effects on gravity could help him figure out how to make a time machine based on a light that circulates. This light beam would potentially twist time and space, and allow someone to travel to the past. Mallet also believes that if this light is twisted in just the right way, travelling to the future could be possible as well. Mallet's peers have been hesitant about his theories, and find it hard to believe he will achieve his goals. An astrophysicist named Paul Stutter believes there's too many flaws in Mallet's theory, and that it doesn't seem practical. Other scientists believe that even though Mallet's ideas aren't very practical, experimenting with them may be worthwhile. Mallet admits that his theory has its flaws, and that it doesn't seem achievable at this moment. He has acknowledged the fact that time travel likely won't be possible in his lifetime, but he is trying to raise money to perform experiments. Regardless of the negative opinions of others, Mallet remains optimistic, he is glad that his work will contribute to the study of time travel, and he considers it a great tribute to his father. Although the majority of historical photographs are interesting, 
there's some that remind us that the world a few decades ago was a very different place. The world has changed for the better, but we can still look back at these photographs and remind ourselves of these events. One mysterious photograph is this one. It shows what looks like a strange man in the background. What caught most people off guard though is when they zoomed in on the man. He has a striking resemblance to Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger will go down in history as being an iconic horror movie character. Since making his debut in A Nightmare on Elm Street, he's featured in various sequels and remakes. Using a glove to take down those that stand in his way, it's hard to imagine where the idea for this movie came from. However, in an interview with Vulture, Wes Craven, who directed the movie, said that his origins are inspired by an article that he read in the LA Times. He said that in the article, a family in Colombia was making their way to the United States. Once here though, their son started to have nightmares, and told his parents that he had to stay awake. The parents were concerned as they said he was afraid to sleep, and said that if he did, bad things would happen. The individual in this photograph looks like it could be Freddy Krueger's twin, having the same kind of fedora as he wears throughout the film series, with some pointing out that it even looks like this individual's skin is similar to that of Freddy's. As of right now, no one knows who this individual is. San Savolo Just 10 minutes from Venice lies an island with a dark and troubling history. Although Italy is full of breathtaking views, one would not travel to San Savolo to take in the view. It is however perfect if you are a history fanatic with a liking for the macabre. The history of the island is linked to the monstrosities and hospitals that were built there, the first being the church dedicated to San Savolo. Between the 9th and 13th century, the island served as the home of Benedictine monks, joined later by a gang of nuns that had escaped the convent of Saint Leon, that had been utterly destroyed by a raging sea quake. However, by the 18th century, only a few nuns were left. As a result, during the war against Turkey in 1716, the monastery was shut down and transformed into a military hospital. From 1725, the Senate of the Republic of Venice made an executive decision. The hospital and the island itself were both used as a makeshift insane asylum, after mental illness was first recognised as a disease that could be cured. To begin with, the asylum was only used for rich patients that could afford their own treatment. However, starting in 1979, the Napoleonic government also sent poor patients to the island for treatment. Unfortunately, because of their class and resulting poor data polenta, Many of these patients succumbed to pellagra, a condition characterised by mental confusion and bewilderment. Completely exclusive and entirely in keeping with the times, San Savolo only allowed male patients to attend the asylum. There were just five doctors in total, directly in charge of taking care of over 700 patients, each with a range of illnesses still being researched. For over 250 years, the island was used as a dumping ground for all of Italy's patients, that is until the main hospital was shut down for the final time in 1978, due to a reform of the Italian legislation on psychiatric hospitals. Somewhat unsurprisingly, the metropolitan city of Venice now owns the island, including all estates and cultural assets associated with the asylum. The government established the Institute for the Study of Social and Cultural Marginalization, a foundation set up to preserve the asylum's history, maintain important records and restore the island to its previous extravagance. Since 1995, the island has also been home to the Venice International University, a centre for research and education, formed to bring the island's economy back up and provide a tourist attraction. Even more recently, the government began hosting an international artist residence out of the museum, which has since become a site for countless stunning exhibitions, vibrant festivals and incredible performances. The Boy and His Grandfather 
It's been speculated by paranormal researchers that babies and young infants are much closer to the non-physical energy that we all originate from. This spiritual connection with Source enables them to remain energetically open to vibrations around them. As babies grow, researchers say they lose this close connection, and it almost becomes dormant. Some believe that before birth, a baby's spirit exists in an in-between realm, between their mother's womb and the spirit world. This is allegedly why so many young adults claim to see paranormal entities in their younger years. While being young is said the veil between their world and the earth realm is still very thin, which allows them to see things that adults can't. In this photograph, a young boy can be seen sitting on an old chair. The poster of the image said the boy's granddad had passed away shortly before this photo was taken. The boy asked if he could have a photograph of granddad, and so they placed him on the chair. Not thinking much of it, the photograph was taken. However, when developed, they could see a mysterious red figure was sitting next to the boy. Those who've seen the image have said you can easily tell that the apparition is in the shape of a human, with other paranormal believers going on to say that the boy climbed on the chair because he could see his granddad. It's photographs like this that prove to some that ghosts are real, and that the subject needs to be investigated more. In recent years, various interesting reports have come out of Russia. One that many aren't aware of is a strange object that could be seen hovering above Western Siberia. Conflicting reports were made when the object was sighted, with some saying that the object looked like an unknown craft, while others were saying this thing came out of a wormhole. Other residents in the region were saying out their claims, such as they could see this thing firing a type of laser and that this was creating an opening in the sky. This caused some to say that this object was creating the wormhole itself. One eyewitness said the following, A fireball emerged out of the sky over the city of Omsk in western Siberia, and was spotted as far as Kazakhstan. There was claims that it was an alien visit. Photographs taken from a car on Tuesday evening shows the object hovering over Superstore Ikea. It was also seen in various cities close by. Astronomers at the Planetarium of the Siberian State University of Geosystems and Technologies confirmed that it wasn't a comet, but have not ruled out if it was a meteor. End quote. Those in the region said that Siberia isn't a stranger to meteors, and that since living there they've seen several. However, they said that this object wasn't like anything that they've seen before. One resident went on to report that this object looked like an eyeball, and that it was flying around in the sky at fast speeds. It would then suddenly stop and flash a light in the sky. This light would then open up something close by, with locals saying that this opening looked like a portal. Another local pointed out that this thing seemed to be flying around in the sky, and it didn't drop to the ground. Some who didn't see the event live but have seen the images suggested that it's actually a rocket launch, saying that it matches other failed rocket launches that have been seen in the region. The locals though seem convinced that this wasn't what they were seeing. As of right now due to conflicting reports, the event remains a mystery. Although these types of events and encounters sound unbelievable, this isn't the only place where this type of unidentified flying object has been observed. One of the places that's known to have these types of UFOs is that of Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch has been a hotbed of UFO activity. It's one of the most common things that are seen here. However, before it became known as the Skinwalker Ranch, it was simply known as a ranch where the Sherman family lived in the 1990s. The Shermans tried to reach out to newspapers and other media outlets to explain their experience of the bizarre things they'd witnessed on the ranch. These tales included the mysterious vanishing of cows, crop circle-like patterns in the pasture and soils, along with countless UFO sightings. According to legend, a werewolf sighting also took place on the Skinwalker Ranch, where a farmer claims he saw the wolf attacking one of his calves. The farmer fired at the wolf without any response. 
The farmer then fired another shot. This time the wolf let go of the calf, but stood upright with no sign of distress. After a third shot, the wolf walked away casually, still unharmed by the multiple bullets. While living on the ranch, one family experienced multiple cattle disappearances, crop circles hearing voices calling from nowhere, objects moving by themselves and seeing strange birds and other animals on the property. Some people have even witnessed thunderbirds on the property. The thunderbird is a cryptozoological creature associated with large bird-like animals. These creatures are believed to be huge in size. Many people over the years have claimed to have witnessed them and say their giant size is unlike anything they've seen before. Terry Sherman said the following while staying here. We would see these 100 foot circular openings appear in the air. It was like four orange colored doorways that would spiral open. Looking through a high powered scope, the Shermans watched as smaller crafts would emerge from the hovering portals, fly around the property and then re-enter the doorways. The Shermans described the stealthier smaller crafts as being around 60 to 40 feet in length. The smaller crafts looked like they were a flying grid. They also appeared to emit spikes of light which hit the ground. Another eerie phenomena soon began to plague the Shermans. The family started noticing glowing blue balls moving around the property. The balls gave off a crackling sound, seemed intelligently controlled and could either hover or move unbelievably fast. One evening the Shermans watched as a blue ball approached one of their horses. The light hovered within a foot of the horse's face, which spooked it immediately. From a distance of 10 feet, they shined a flashlight on the blue globe and it retreated. It then approached Terry as if inspecting him. Terry described it as a glass ball around the size of a baseball, which appeared to contain two blue fluids which intermingled with each other. These blue UFOs have been seen for decades now, but people can't seem to agree on what they are. Some say they're drone-like crafts related to UFOs, while others have said they're energy balls that are under intelligent control. Since then, other people have carried out experiments on Skin Rock or Ranch, and have also seen similar things. Some have described the area as being aware, and that when you try to record these sightings, they suddenly stop. It's as if Skin Rock or Ranch is alive. As of right now, those who've investigated this region have said there's something going on. What that thing is, is yet to be explained. One of the largest theory community groups in the world is that of the combined writings of cryptozoological beliefs, or even that of the overly popular concept of alien intervention and abduction. It appears to be the collective theory and gathered evidence of the existence of ancient advanced civilizations. It's only really been in recent years that people have started to look into our ancient history, study what our ancestors said, and look at how they realistically created and achieved what they did. Various archaeological discoveries have been made in recent years that have confused scientists and researchers. Although they've gone on to explain how these things came to be, it's important to remember that these are just theories, and although they may be the leading idea into how these things came to be, it doesn't mean we should totally rule out other possibilities. Back in 1972, when a large amount of uranium ore was being mined from the Oklo mine, located out of the country of Gabron, a small nation found in Central Africa, scientists began to test the uranium deposits to catalogue the amount of recovered uranium-235 that was gathered from the site, and could be used for ongoing efforts of nuclear fusion and nuclear reactors. Unfortunately, they quickly realised that a substantial amount of uranium-235 was missing from the ore deposits, as uranium-235 naturally forms a solid concentration of 0.72%, but found a significant amount lacking from the mined minerals. As they investigated the situation, believing that perhaps more than 200 kilograms had been stolen, they quickly realised that located near the mined location was the perfect conditions to form a believed to be naturally forming nuclear reactor that is dated to be roughly 1.8 billion years old. The scientists claimed that the uranium ore was used up when a naturally formed cavern, 
using underground water to help stabilise the nuclear reaction was discovered underground. Theorists however have an alternative explanation. Given the fact that the specifications required to form a naturally made nuclear reactor require specific storage of the uranium-235, the continued influx of water and a number of steps to prevent the compounds from becoming superheated, it's believed that the location is not naturally formed, and rather the use of a primitive nuclear reactor used by humans, and possibly used to create a substantial amount of energy. Theorists point to the fact that if ancient humans were allegedly able to build massive megalithic structures, along with impressive inventions which seemed impossible to achieve during such a time, why wouldn't they be able to build something like a nuclear reactor? The issue with these theories, including those that scientists have put forward, is that they're just theories. It's understandable why people would think that advanced civilizations once lived in the past. After all, their incredible megalithic structures are still standing today, thousands of years after they were built, while modern buildings and designs have fallen within a few hundred years. Scientists, historians and archaeologists can't agree in the age of some of these structures either, with some saying that they're a few thousand years old, while others have said they're tens of thousands of years old. Today, the claim that this is a nuclear reactor is debated. Other mysterious structures are those that are currently standing at Giza. It's a subject that's been talked about for years, but what some don't point out is some of the inconsistencies and math that comes with it. The first question that's been put forward is if the 3 to 80 ton blocks were dragged up the pyramids. Why are there no marks on the structures itself? Also, where are these massive ramps that helped with the workers? How are these ramps able to take the strain of a 40 to 60 ton stone block? According to modern historians and Egyptologists, they claim that a massive amount of people helped construct these giant pyramids. In fact, Greek philosopher and historian Herodotus claimed that 100,000 men built these structures, and they did this within 20 years. That would mean that one stone block would have to be precisely placed on the pyramid every three and a half minutes, 24 hours a day for 20 years straight. The pyramids are claimed to be royal tombs, yet as of today not one mummy has ever been discovered inside. One thing that is known about the Egyptians is they carved hieroglyphics into many things, yet when inside the pyramids you will not find any hieroglyphic markings. As mentioned, although various theories have been put forward to try and explain them, as of today they're just theories. The main questions that remain today is how were they built, why were they built and who built them? Also during the 1950s, French Egyptologist Ari Schwaller visited the Great Sphinx and remarked that there was a substantial amount of water erosion across the structure, believing that perhaps the structure had been submerged at one point in time and had not been weathered by the wind as previous theories claimed. Shortly after this claim, Schwaller was labelled as a mystic and slandered by countless other archaeologists who believed that Schwaller was making up their claims to appeal to a fringe group of theorists. Despite these personal attacks, alternative Egyptologist and author John Anthony West sought out the opinion of the Associate Professor of Natural Sciences at the College of General Studies at Boston University, a geologist by the name of Robert N. Schmack. This was back in 1989. Robert then spent a significant amount of time investigating the enclosure's geology and came to the conclusion that the main type of weathering that was evidence on the Sphinx's enclosure were caused by significant amounts of water damage and not that of natural wind and sand as previously theorised. Robert Schnock also found the weathering was consistent with blocks found at the Valley Temples, leading Robert to claim the following statement. Therefore, if the granite facing is covering deeply weathered limestone, the original limestone structures must predate by a considerable degree the granite facing. Obviously, if the limestone cores, originating from the Sphinx ditch of the temples predate the granite ashlars, and the granite ashlars are attributed to Khafre of the 4th dynasty, then the Great Sphinx was built prior to the reign of Khafre. End quote. 
given the fact that the Egyptian government is keen to maintain the history that the ancient Egyptian civilization was responsible for the megalithic structures, and not some unknown civilization that predates their culture. It would explain why efforts have been made to cover up the findings over the decades. Today, the water erosion hypothesis is still shunned by the Egyptian community. Our oceans are some of the most interesting places on our planet, mainly because various regions are unexplored. This leaves a huge number of artifacts lying beneath them that humans haven't seen in hundreds or thousands of years. Different archaeological discoveries have been made under our oceans that have caused us to reevaluate our history and what our ancestors were capable of. Different ancient cities have been found beneath the waves, not only showing us that we still have a lot to learn, but also showing that whole civilizations could be submerged. The most recent discovery that's been made using NASA's satellite is this strange object that appears to be moving beneath the ocean floor. Interestingly, a similar object was found a while back, but this one appears to have turned around 90 degrees on the sea floor. Taking measurements will show you that this structure is massive. It measures in at 21.45 kilometers, or 13.3 miles in length. What people can't seem to explain though is how such a large object is able to do a 90 degree turn. Not only that, but it's also gone on to travel for a few miles after this. Some UFO believers also find it interesting that at the end of this trail, you can see what looks like a disc. This shape is synonymous with UFOs, being one of the most commonly shaped UFOs out there. One believer said the following, This photograph is interesting because not only can we see what looks like a massive skid mark, but we can also see what appears to be a UFO at the end, or should I say a USO? These USOs are not as common as UFOs, but there's debate within the community whether these types of crafts are the same. UFOs are seen around large bodies of water, and USOs have been reported on a number of occasions coming out of the ocean. So some researchers have said that UFOs have the ability to go in and out of the water, or some think that the two are different. End quote. It's interesting to see an object at the end of what appears to be a skid mark. Normally, these features don't have anything at the end, and when first viewing this photograph, it does look like this object could have caused the large skid mark behind it. What's strange about this, though, is that those who've seen the images have also noticed that the areas above and below the structure look to be blurred out, saying that is it possible that NASA have gone in and done this themselves? It's known that NASA touch up or edit photographs before they're released to the public. This could be because when we're talking about Google Earth, certain regions need to be blurred out for security reasons. There's a few places that you can't view due to them being top secret. This can include things like government buildings or top secret locations that are off limits to the public. But why then would they go out of their way to blur something in the ocean? Theorists who spend time looking at these images have given their ideas as to why they would do this. One person said the following, It's strange when you find a structure of interest in the ocean, only to find out that it's been blurred out. And isn't it a coincidence that it seems to be blurred out at the exact point where there seems to be something of interest? In terms of these objects, it's always blurred towards the top and bottom of the trails meaning that we can't see if there's any more of these objects nearby. Various times NASA has been seen doing this, but all it does is make us question what they're trying to hide. End quote. This photograph also reminded some of the mysterious Baltic Sea anomaly that was discovered a few years back. The Baltic Sea anomaly has a 60 meter diameter and can be found lying on the floor of the northern Baltic Sea. It was discovered by Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Asberg and their Swedish OceanX diving team, and this was back in June 2011. The team made this discovery while they were looking for an old shipwreck. As they passed over the objects though, they received a mysterious reading. They'd never seen anything like this before, and were very excited by what this object could potentially be. 
the group have described themselves as individuals who locate underwater treasures and bring it back to its former glory. They specifically specialize in underwater and historic artifacts. According to Ocean X, the anomaly is around 3 to 4 meters thick and has an approximate diameter of 60 meters. Interestingly, this large object is said to be sitting on a thick 8 meter tall pillar and this can be found at around 85 to 90 meters. One thing the team have noted though is that the visibility is really bad and although 90 meters doesn't sound deep, it's really hard to see anything when you're down there. The team reported that on one of their first expeditions they started to experience some malfunctions in their equipment. They didn't think much of it, but as they passed the object everything started to work as normal again. Thinking this was just a one-off, they then went back over the object, and once again their equipment stopped working. This has caused the team to speculate that this object is giving off some kind of electromagnetic field. They've also tested this a variety of times, and every time they do this their equipment stops working. Professional diver Stefan Hoggerborn said the following, Anything electric out there and the satellite phone as well, stopped working when we was above the object. When we got around 200 meters away it turned on again, and when we went back over the object it didn't work. End quote. So what do you make of this interesting object seen at the bottom of the ocean, and what do you think it is? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.